SWAT team to arrive here, and Monterey Park PD also en route. And so initially we'll probably see the FBI and the other uh, government agencies coming down to check this out as well. Um, one thing that was interesting when I did push in here, the cargo van, not typical of too many cargo vans that has a, a, a divider between the driver and the the cargo area this looks like there's access to the cargo area from the front so they do think the person is inside we're just waiting to see how this plays out but there are large large police presence standing by now you arrived on scene moments within minutes before we came on the air for this live streaming coverage now that being said i understand you may not have this information i'm about to ask you do you know was there like a pursuit leading up to this location how exactly those swat vehicles got involved into that uh, specific uh, positioning that they're in do you have any of that information I do not. Unfortunately, we we're unable to hear Torrance PD because of the radio system that they use, but we did pick this up with LA County Sheriff's. Torrance PD notified LA County Sheriff's that they had a potential suspect vehicle, and when they arrived, the sheriffs arrived, this is the scene that was already being played out. Absolutely. So we were listening to LA County Sheriff's. There is a number of sheriff vehicles helping support this operation. They have shut down this little intersection at Sepulveda and Hawthorne Boulevard. We're just in the south west corner from the Delamo Fashion Center. So very busy intersection, very busy in the morning. We see multiple resources shutting down all parts of the area so that way we can keep the public away and they could figure this out. Yeah, we Absolutely. can see the uh, crime tape there on both sides of the street, but there seems to be also a growing public presence on the other side of this entire scene where people are just lined up and parked, probably a majority of them, um, media presence there trying to get details out to the public but um, we're waiting to see what the police will do here waiting for the police presence to grow I know the FBI was investigating earlier we have the uh, sheriff's deputies that are on their way as well to provide assistance here um, not too much activity as of right now and Marcel, I want to add, you know, you typically work side by side with Scott Reif during the morning. Uh, so you have covered numerous pursuits in situations like this. Um, your take on what you're seeing with the body language of these officers, the canine that's on standby. Do you gather anything from from what you're seeing on the on the body language? Clearly, I mean, guns are drawn here. Uh, what does that tell you? Uh, yeah, Mark, I believe the posturing that they have right now is definitely of, of one of they are on alert. They, You typically don't see this type of enforcement and or the outpouring of the resources if they didn't think somebody was in there or they didn't think they had a suspect involved. So they are taking every precaution to make sure that they are safe and that they keep the public safe by just making sure this person in this van does not cause any more harm to the general public. Yeah, and there really is kind of a, a best case scenario where it's not in a neighborhood. You don't have homes there. It looks like they've cleared the parking lot. Uh, so you don't have a, a major risk of bystander individuals who could be uh, caught in this. You can see the full intersection has been shut down. So they're working to make sure they have a good perimeter here for this active uh, situation that is unfolding, not knowing if that suspect who they believe is in the van is still armed. Again, we had the information that the suspect who was at the second incident last night had a weapon taken from them. So does this individual have additional weapons? That is adding to a lot of the questions and the concern this morning. Yeah, it looks like they're doing a good job of clearing that area for for this um approach. Um, now, Marcel, we're going to put you on standby real quick because we also want to go now to Bruce Thomas, who is our law enforcement expert that we have been talking to throughout the morning, who's been giving us some really good insight on the process that law enforcement goes through and what sorts of information that they release at certain times of an investigation. Now, Bruce, you're taking a look live at the uh, suspect in that cargo van being surrounded by two SWAT vehicles by Torrance PD. Can you give us our, your take on what's happening here? Yeah, what it is is this is basically a felony traffic stop, which has now escalated into a SWAT operation. Uh, Torrance PD has moved what are known as Bearcat vehicles. They're armored personnel vehicles. 
used by law enforcement. They've pinned the white van from the rear and from the front, and then SWAT is able to operate from the turret on top to get a good look inside um, safely, and the officers can do that. And Bruce, uh, we talk about this often, time is on their side, especially with these circumstances. I was speaking about the perimeter that they've established. You don't have homes, the person is uh, somewhat trapped in there, not moving. Time is on their side. Can you speak to that? Yes, it is. Um, you know, they have a great operational area. It's an industrial area with a parking lot. And I mean industrial, meaning full of businesses that some are open, some are not on Sunday. So they have a great field of fire, a great operational area. Yes, time is definitely on their side. But many people who are watching right now are wondering why aren't they moving in? What are, what are they specifically waiting for? Can you give us context? Sure. Well, what they're doing is they're treating it as a barricaded suspect, a sus suspect who is not cooperating with law enforcement and possibly is armed. So at this point, there's no rush to go into that vehicle. He he is not going anywhere. That vehicle is not going anywhere. So eventually, they will make a approach using different tactics, which we will see live on TV. Is that typically usually the first step, something like tear gas through the windshield? Um, it can be. The first step would be to call the suspect out. Step out of the vehicle with your hands up, giving some very precise uh, verbal commands to the suspect. Eventually, if that doesn't work, then they do have to make an approach. They can shatter the window with glass shattering rounds or less lethal weaponry and then deploy pepper spray and or tear gas into that vehicle. Let's assume and hope that this is the correct suspect vehicle and it really speaks to the power of law enforcement and the mutual aid, the fact that they were able to locate this within hours. We were speaking earlier this morning that more cases than not, the suspect in these mass shootings is located and often pretty quickly. The fact that this guy left the scene, has been on the run miles away across town and still located. I mean, that is just incredible because the description of the van and now that we see it, it's somewhat a, of a needle in the haystack because there are so many of these white cargo vans on the road. Look, we pan over. There's another one. Yeah, and even at the scene in that vacant lot, there were three right there. Uh, it's a very common vehicle, especially in L.A. County. And to the sheer magnitude of, of investi uh, investigators uh, to be able to put this information out and to locate it in Torrance, a totally other end of the L.A. County spectrum. Yeah. yeah, Torrance is now taking over uh, at least this situation. We know that Monterey Park PD is on their way and that sheriff's deputies are possibly on scene as well. What is the, uh, the big purpose of having multiple agencies on scene for a situation like this? Well, it, it, it's multifaceted. Um, you have the sheriff's homicide investigators who are the lead agency in this along with Monterey Park PD. You now have Torrance, who has found the vehicle, possibly, and is conducting a SWAT operation on the vehicle. So ultimately, when the suspect comes out, and we'll believe he will, um, he will be turned over to Monterey Park PD, who will probably transport to their facilities, and then Sheriff's Homicide will interview. So there's multiple things going on right now. And there's always that question is the uh, the condition of the suspect, assuming he is in the vehicle there in the back area that we can't see. Uh, what is his condition? Um, and there's so many question marks as to what's happening inside of that van this morning that we will, of course, uh, hold off on until we uh, get it confirmed. No doubt law enforcement from uh, the Santa Gabriel Valley area and the county sheriff's department will be responding to this scene. It was earlier this morning. I guess we're going on two hours ago, maybe three hours ago, that we heard from law enforcement, uh, the county sheriff, Robert Luna, from uh, Monterey Park, from the city hall, they spoke about what they knew, and at the time, it wasn't much, only that it was an uh, Asian man uh, identified as the suspect in this white type of cargo van. So it really is piecing together uh, rather quickly. Little bits of information throughout the morning have been coming out, uh, but this is typical. I mean, that's, that's the way it works. You get little slivers of information, and Bruce, it can be the smallest thing that, that tips off uh, officers to send them in the right direction. Yeah, they might have got some video surveillance of the vehicle, the license plate, 
and then knew that it was coming from this particular area of L.A. County, notified the law enforcement agencies down in the South Bay. Uh, Torrance found the vehicle. Um, there may have been a slight pursuit, and ultimately we end up where we are now. Okay, it sounds like we are going to be getting some new information in just a few minutes at 1130. We hear there is going to be another press conference regarding this mass shooting from overnight. Um, very interesting as we continue to look on the left side of your screen as this suspect apprehension is still ongoing. Yeah, you wonder if they're able to confirm for us uh, what we know about this white van and potentially the suspect inside. Uh, let's hope that that's the case. Uh, no doubt they are up to date. Uh, the agency is investigating on what is occurring here at this location uh, in Torrance as we have this live image for you uh, from Air 7 HD. Uh, you go back just to the, uh, the heartbreak of the crime and what this individual is allegedly responsible for. 10 lives taken in Monterey Park, an additional 10 more uh, at least injured in that shooting, the emotional trauma for the community that was celebrating the Lunar New Year with a festival last night that had wrapped up. The festival was scheduled to continue this morning. That has been canceled. So just not only the loss of life and those injured and what's going to happen with those families that were impacted, but the community. We heard from a baker earlier this morning that simply works in the area and how impacted he was emotionally mm -hmm. but by what happened in his community to his neighbors and not knowing, did he know any of the victims? You know, there's so many questions and so much impact that, uh, you know, occurs from this. And again, throwing out that clarification that the shooting in Monterey Park did happen at a dance studio with the Lunar New Year celebration just about a block away. It did not specifically happen at that celebration, but because it was so close to where about 100,000 people were supposed to be visiting, visiting throughout the weekend, people are saying this could have been much, much worse. And um, now with the Lunar New Year celebration still going on, an Asian Americans celebrating um, there. We've been hearing that many are feeling very torn because of such a tragic shooting on what was supposed to be a very joyous and happy celebration and holiday. Uh, so it is a, a very heartbreaking and emotional day for so many people and being torn in, in different directions. And here. we know that some events, uh, other events outside of Monterey Park that were scheduled for today mm -hmm. have been canceled. I believe there was one at the Citadel today and some other events that were around the area that decided to pull the plug and go ahead, better safe than sorry, cancel that event, uh, both out of safety and respect for, right. for what occurred. Uh, even though the county sheriff was telling people celebrate, you know, you know, honor this festival uh, wherever you may be celebrating today. So a bit of you know, mixed messages coming in and on how sh people should react, how they should carry on with their day. Uh, but certainly uh, you know, it's not just one city uh, that mm -hmm. is impacted by this. OK, it looks like we have Air 7 that is needing to leave the scene as of right now, but we are hopefully going to get more aerial pictures for you in a bit. But again, that suspect is believed to be inside that cargo van being surrounded by police. You're taking a look at video from the aftermath of the shooting in Monterey Park um, where that all happened and 10 people were killed, five men, five women. You can see a lot of the victims there being taken to various hospitals across the region. And I believe we received a, an age range on the suspect, was it earlier, mm -hmm. between 30 to 50 years old. Obviously yes. a huge uh, range in age for that suspect. And so many questions regarding uh, the motive. Uh, because, as you mentioned, Irene, the Lunar New Year and the fact that Monterey Park is a predominantly Asian American community, 65% or so, that do identify as Asian American. And we heard earlier this morning as well. She was at the news conference and also uh, joined us regarding um, uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu, her uh, reaction, because this is her hometown. She's there speaking at this news conference for a city that she used to serve on the city council and then as mayor. And she's there speaking alongside uh, law enforcement agencies uh, for this mass shooting, the latest here in the U.S., now impacting her very own hometown. What you're seeing now are images, video uh, we had from just moments ago above that situation in Torrance near the Del Amo Fashion Center. Center Mall, where law enforcement agencies with the uh, Torrance Police Department are surrounding that white van described at the, as the uh, possible suspect vehicle connected to the 
mass shooting last night. And we were just speaking with Bruce Thomas, our law enforcement expert. He was mentioning to us that they're treating treating this as a barricade situation. So time is uh, definitely on their side where he doesn't have anywhere to go. The big question is, is he dangerous and armed inside that vehicle? Does he pose a threat to the officers who are responding to this scene? And that is why you can see many of the Torrance police officers on standby, on guard there. They even had a, a canine there as well, just in case. So uh, we are waiting to see what they will do next to get this uh, suspect out of that van. Bruce, can I ask you, uh, as you're on the phone with us, Bruce Thomas, our law enforcement expert, as you look at the posture here of the officers on the ground, how confident are you just by seeing the images you're seeing that this is our suspect? How often is it the wrong vehicle? I, I know that's a, a, broad, a broad topic. Yeah, it, I mean, we're going to go with the posture that we're seeing as this is the vehicle. They obviously have information that they have not shared with us um, because of the fact that there's so much resource out there. And I know if Air 7 HC is able to pull out a little bit, they have even a command post set up to the side there. So I, I believe that this is the suspect vehicle, as they do also. Okay, on the left side of your screen, we're taking a look at where we're expecting to see a press conference at Monterey Park City Hall in just a few minutes. That's scheduled for 1130. We do have a reporter there who will be uh, giving us the new details on what law enforcement agencies know about the suspect and the situation itself. And just to clarify, the image on the right is the uh, video from Air 7 HD. Um, our helicopter did have to relocate temporarily to refuel. So what you're seeing is video from just minutes ago of the second Bearcat coming up from behind of this uh, white cargo van. The SWAT vehicle at the front was already there when we arrived uh, overhead. Um, as mentioned, uh, we do have that reporter that is on the scene of uh, Monterey Park City Hall. That is Rob Hayes. He is on standby for us uh, as we wait to learn the very latest, but that news conference uh, potentially just about five minutes away. If it is on schedule, completely unclear what they're going to discuss. Mm -hmm. We hope it's in relation to what we're witnessing here in the city of Torrance. Exactly. Bruce, if we could bring you back into this. I mean, we've been asking you this pretty much before details have been released prior to a press conference, but now that we're seeing the suspect potentially being apprehended by law enforcement, what are we hoping to find out in this upcoming press conference at 1130? Well, what we would hope is that uh, law enforcement officials will mention that at this point there is a separate operation going on in the city of Torrance on what they believe to be the suspect vehicle and that they believe that vehicle to be occupied by the suspect and they will let this operation play out. Okay, uh, Bruce, stand by and watch with us here. We have new images just in. Uh, this was uh, released by the Sheriff's Department from Robert Luna minutes ago, uh, just about four minutes ago. That is the homicide suspect, an Asian male. Uh, you see his height and weight there, uh, description wearing that beanie. And that is the man that they are looking for, which we believe is inside of that white van. At least that's what uh, Torrance police believe. Uh, this alert that was just released saying investigators have identified this man as a homicide suspect. He should be considered armed and dangerous. As we uh, scroll back up, if possible, here we go. Three images of that suspect. Um, I would put his age closer to 50 or 60, just given that image. He does not look like a 30-year-old man. Yeah, we were given that range earlier today between 30 and 50 years old. And I think that was partially because many of the witnesses were describing the suspect in various fashions. So they didn't have an exact um, description of him in the beginning. Um, but this is the first image that we are seeing of this suspect. Many people who have been watching our coverage have been asking, 
why don't we have an image of the suspect hours after this all started? Um, again, it was because the uh, suspect was still on the loose and uh, law enforcement didn't want to release too much information as they were still investigating. But these are the three initial images that we're seeing of the suspect who could possibly be in that cargo van. We are waiting to learn more from that press conference in just a bit. Yeah, it's unclear whether these images doesn't matter much, whether it's from the Monterey Park location or the Alhambra location, uh, because at the second location, he had a weapon wrestled away from him by patrons there. But certainly three clear images. We were wondering earlier, was this suspect masked? You know, could he be identified? And now the answer uh, is yes. And we were wondering when images, if at all, would be released. Bruce, your take on the fact that these images just now have been released and coupling that with the fact of what we're looking at from Air 7 HD, what do you make of that? You know, once again, we're going to connect the dots. Um, as more information is available, they will put it out to the public. In this case, they've now put out the photos of what they believe to be the suspect. Um, and that goes in with if they know who he is, they know the vehicle registration information and ultimately where we are now in the city of Torrance. Yeah, it's so very frightening. Um, the exact weapon uh, is unclear that the suspect used. We know that one weapon was recovered from the second scene in Alhambra, also a dance studio. Uh, that weapon uh, wrestled away from the suspect by patrons of that dance hall. Uh, what you don't know is if the suspect was armed with additional weapons. Are those weapons in this white van that we see there on the right side of your screen? Um, otherwise, there is so much concern for multiple communities, if we weren't looking at this situation mm -hmm. of, of the suspect potentially being kind of pinned in here, barricaded, because for hours we didn't know where is he, where, where did he go, was he still in the vicinity of the initial shooting, uh, had he traveled out of state, out of area, because at this point we're now 13 hours into the investigation. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. And, um, you know, Bruce, can you give us some perspective on the tactics that law enforcement uses in this kind of situation? I know we kind of touched on it earlier, but for those of you who are just joining our coverage, we'd like to know what does law enforcement do when we have someone in a, in a van like this and why have we not necessarily approached quite yet? Well, we're, we make the assumption, rightfully or until we know otherwise, the suspect is armed. Um, we value human life, uh, ours, and the suspects also. So at this point, we do it by the numbers. We call SWAT, which is very familiar with these type of incidents, and has the resources beyond the regular patrol officers to deal with this, meaning they brought the Bearcats in. They barricaded his vehicle in with those Bearcats. And then basically they will set up a sniper operation. They'll set up an observational operation to try to get as much information as they can about the vehicle and the person inside. Does every agency have access to, uh, you know, robots that can go in a little bit closer? Um, is that something that is typically used in a situation like this instead of sending in an officer on the ground to get any closer to the windows? Yeah, the bigger agencies do. I'm not sure if Torrance does or not. Um, I know the Sheriff's Department has their arson explosives unit, which has a couple of robots, uh, the Andros type, where they roll up on a uh, tread and they're able to deploy something like a shotgun round to break the window. They could actually interject a phone to talk to our CNT team, which is a crisis negotiating team. So there are a lot of assets which they bring to the table, and Torrance may be requesting some of those. Yeah, that would be very helpful in a, in a situation like this where we don't want necessarily one of our officers approaching this if there is a, a major threat to, uh, to them. So um, having something like that would be very fundamental. Um, in this barricade situation. And Bruce, I want to add the Bearcats, clearly we don't want those vehicles to be moved, but do you see Torrance PD carrying out this specific operation or do we ever have a case where sheriff's deputies uh, will arrive or Monterey Park police to somewhat take over or for this specific incident since it is in the city of Torrance and they were there first, do they proceed and do they help close this out? 
Um, well, Torrance PD has a SWAT team, um, a very capable one that is trained extensively with the sheriff's department. So they work hand in hand. Uh, what they do is almost identical. So in this case, I don't see the sheriffs coming in and relieving them, so to speak. They may come in with additional assets. Also, Torrance PD has the canine teams, which mm -hmm. they may end up deploying a canine dog, too. We do have one on standby. Uh, in fact, good timing there with the video. You see the canine there next to that SUV, that patrol SUV. So there is a canine that is on scene, ready to go in. Um, if necessary. At this point, um, we've been talking, using the word speculation. Um, let's assume they are about to get their guy. How much do we look into the past, into social media, into um, what this suspect had revealed, you know, what we knew and maybe what we missed? Um, that is all something investigators will do. Um, unfortunately, it may be after the fact. However, they will build up a full workup of the suspect involving social media, criminal history, mental history, everything. Just to give you, uh, for those of you who are watching, just to give you an update on where we are with our coverage, you're taking a, a look at uh, video from earlier on the right side of your screen, but we are waiting for our chopper to get back over this situation so we can get live pictures. We also have a reporter there at the scene we should be talking to hopefully in the next few minutes or so. On the left side of your screen, you're seeing that podium at the Monterey Park Civic Center where we've also just gotten word that the press conference with updated information has been pushed back a few minutes to roughly around 11.45. So that is when we're hoping to get that new information into our newsroom. Yeah, during the news conference that we had around the 8.30 hour, so yeah, that is three hours ago, we heard from the LA County Sheriff, we heard from the mayor of Monterey Park, we heard from the police chief of Monterey Park, we heard briefly from the assistant director in charge of the FBI. He did not speak much as to the investigation, but clearly um, a joint investigation, lots of mutual aid being poured into this, including the ATF. And, and Bruce, the ATF gonna play a big role in this as well. How does their role differ from, say, you know, the local agencies? Uh, the AT, well, the ATF will be involved in tracing this gun. Was it purchased legally? Is it a ghost gun? Uh, how did this person get the gun? That's what the ATF is going to be involved in and doing. And ultimately, the FBI will be involved in um, possibly prosecuting him under federal crimes. Okay, as you're speaking, I'm just keeping my eye on the uh, pending news conference in uh, Monterey Park uh, that is on standby, nothing occurring there yet. We believe that may now be about 10 minutes away. Uh, I'm gonna speak uh, to our producers and ask if we have that ground shot from Torrance as well. There it is, there. the ground shot. Okay, yeah, it's freezing a bit. That's why we've been holding off on that. We do have a ground crew that is at that Torrance location, but that answers our question. You can see why uh, there was a bit of a uh, freezing there with that camera shot. But in the meantime, we are also, again, looking at the first images of our suspect um, from this morning. It's on the left side of your screen. This was just released a few minutes ago. Um, people have been wondering who this person is and what the motive was. We, we simply do not know at this point in time that hasn't been released by sheriff's uh, deputies or investigators, um, but we do know this is uh, the person they are trying to uh, get a hold of. This is uh, someone in a, a, a black beanie, a black I'm leather sorry, jacket. And additional um, units requested we, multiple victims, gunshot wounds. We are hearing some of that audio recording here. from when that shooting uh, first occurred last night. That was from the police scanners overnight. You're taking a, a look at some video from the aftermath of this with the victims being transported to the hospital. Yeah, you can imagine always that chaos and that initial response in uh, what information was going out, what those initial responding officers found when they arrived there in the parking lot, victims pouring out of the dance hall, then to go inside and find those 10 victims who were killed, they died inside uh, that dance hall at the location in Monterey Park. Uh, Bruce Thomas, I, I know a lot of our viewers um, are not fans of the uh, hate crime discussion because what does it matter? And the fact here that you have um, an Asian male suspect potentially connected to a crime against victims who are predominantly Asian American. Yeah, I mean, hate crime, it's a title. 
Um, it is something, you know, that we in law enforcement have come to use just as we use the word terrorist, uh, domestic terrorism. Um, it is more for prosecutorial purposes, but it also opens up local law enforcement, local cities, to be able to get some additional training monies. Yeah. Um, you know, and a hate crime is just is just a wrong crime um, on somebody because of their ethnicity, their race, or their gender. And there has to be some sort of, you know, wording or social media post or something left at the scene of the crime that indicates that this was uh, done out of hatred for a, a certain group of people that that in the eyes of the law designates this as a hate crime. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's something where the feds come into play now with the enhancements uh, during a criminal trial seeking additional years against the suspect for hate crimes, as it is, there's a lot of federal legal statutes against that. But the sheriff has said this is not off the table. They have not ruled it out, but they have not uh, found an exact motive for the shooting at this point in time. So people have been trying to figure out why, why that specific dance studio and why so close to a Lunar New Year celebration. Absolutely. I want to point out here, we now have that ground shot up and uh, it is transmitting from Torrance and great work there zooming in to that white van. Uh, this is a, a live image there. This is Sepulveda and Hawthorne in the city of Torrance. It is not at the Del Amo Fashion Center. It's uh, across the way from that location, but that just gives you perspective on where exactly this is uh, occurring for those folks who may live or travel in that area. Sepulveda and Hawthorne is the location. And it looks like if you see behind the Bearcat, they have a drone that has been uh, taking a look inside the vehicle. So Bruce, before you were talking about robots that would um, you know, scan this area um, just to make sure that none of the officers got too close to any sort of threat. But now we're seeing a drone right behind that Bearcat uh, taking a look at at what might be in, moving around inside the the cargo van yeah and even as we say that as well vehicles are kind of restaging um, moving back a bit it leads you to question are they about to move in a lot of movement here with officers on the ground bruce why do they typically do that we're seeing a lot of vehicles back off here uh to case in point with the drone uh most law enforcement agencies SWAT operations have now used the drone to get a very safe observational platform. So that's what you see, Torrance PD does have one. Uh, the Sheriff's Department has deployed it, Torrance PD has deployed it before, so that's what they're doing. To your second uh, question, they are moving the regular officers out of position, and those officers will be replaced by SWAT oper operators, uh, just because they're well-versed in this type of situation. And what will those SWAT operators be doing next, possibly, as they move into their location? Uh, they, they practice this. So they have plan A, B, and C. And what they're going to do is they probably will deploy some sort of less lethal weaponry to break the window of the van. Uh, a van is a very complex situation because there's not many windows like a vehicle or a car. You've got the front windows and side driver's side, and that's about it. So, and the front windshield is very problematic to break through. So they will probably deploy something like a uh, pepper ball glass shattering round, which they have, and that will break the window. And then they will introduce maybe a CS gas, tear, uh, pepper spray or tear gas into the vehicle to get the suspect to leave. You mentioned breaking the window. It's hard to tell from this perspective, but the driver's side rear view mirror on this van it's hard to tell if that is shattered or not. Um, it does appear that the glass is broken. I want to thank our photographer on the ground for putting on the extender there, but that sure looks like it's shattered, whether it's the rear view mirror or if it's a reflection of the front windshield. Um, yeah, it's certainly taking some damage, possibly from that bear cat uh, hitting it head on. We're not quite sure what what led up to the vehicles being positioned in this right. way. And was there a pursuit? We, we don't have right. that answer. We questioned it. We didn't know if there was some type of pursuit leading to this location. Um, if that is the case, we are not aware of that. But maybe that would uh, help explain that situation. Then maybe some type of shots. 
uh, non-lethal uh, were shot earlier to break that window or from the impact, as uh, Irene mentioned. So just wanted to, to point that out um, since we could uh, at least see it from our ground camera. Uh, those officers, the SWAT team uh, on standby waiting to make their move. A little concerning that in, in the distance uh, behind this uh, Bearcat, you can see members of the public that are still kind of in the vicinity um, of the mm -hmm. area. I saw as we were pushing in uh, that there were plainclothes citizens that were kind of in the area somewhat watching what was going on. Um, not the best location to be in, uh, knowing the risk of what we're looking at here um, as officers are, are essentially waiting to make their move. The time right now is 1142 as we are streaming live here on Eyewitness News. Um, we are watching and standing by for a news conference from the city of Monterey Park. Uh, that is not uh, occurred yet, of course. You can see the podium. Uh, they were initially scheduled to give us an update at 1130. That has been pushed back to 1145. If that is on schedule, that is now just uh, two minutes away. As I speak, I get an update. 1150 is the new update. So we are seven minutes away from that potentially occurring. Bruce, I have a question. I mean, earlier we were talking about how we didn't want any of the officers getting too close to the vehicle because we, we value human life. We value also the uh, suspect's life at this point in time. But it seems like there is almost a change in the body language here where officers before were were shielded behind doors, they had their guns drawn, they had the canines ready, but now it feels like they're a lot closer to the vehicle, they're simply walking around, it doesn't seem like they feel as though there was as much of a threat as before. Do you think that he may be incapacitated if he's uh, in the van? Um, he might be. They may have heard something that may have lead them to believe that the suspect may have taken their own life. I mean, that's a possibility, too, and that's one of the things that they're, they've planned for also. The other thing, too, is uh, they've got the suspect pinned in. He is not going anywhere. So in this case, uh, for the suspect to, we believe, will have a weapon or may have an additional weapon, um, it's kind of hard for him to engage the officers with a van that has solid panels on basically three-quarters of it. So that's where the posture changes a little bit. We now have the third Bearcat arriving on scene. This one specifically is with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. But as you mentioned a moment ago, Bruce, a lot of these agencies, when it comes to SWAT, they train and work together. Yeah, the Sheriff's Department is the lead agency for uh, SWAT tactics. They even train Torrance. They train Beverly Hills PD, other agencies, and including the FBI and the Secret Service have trained with them. And certainly that collaboration to make sure that all agencies, uh, when responding to these incidents, uh, you know, have the same approach. And then when they come together in a situation like this, they're all on the same page. And that goes a far way. Yes, it does. Even to the point where the verbiage and the wording of commands and things are universal. Mm, very interesting to see what they will be doing next. They're, they're huddled in behind that Bearcat, which is very close to the vehicle itself. Um, it looks like uh, Torrance PD has also backed away from that specific location. Again, we're about five minutes away or so from hearing an update on um, this uh, barricade situation with the cargo van here in Torrance, but the press conference should be happen happening out of Monterey Park at the uh, City Hall facility there in just a few minutes. I don't know. The, the more I see here, it, it, it kind of seems surprising that they could hold a press conference when we are unresolved on the situation on the left right. of your screen. Uh, if we don't know for sure what is inside the van, uh, I just question what type of information law enforcement from Monterey Park is going to be able to provide. Does that strike you as odd? And maybe this may continue to be pushed back. Uh, Bruce, what do you think? Uh yeah, my guess is they are going to continue to push it back until this operation has concluded. Uh, you can't, you know, once you open the door, so to speak, and say, well, you know, law enforcement officers from Torrance and the Sheriff's Department are conducting a felony traffic stop on a suspect vehicle, and the suspect has barricaded himself in. Well, we all know where the next questions are going to come, and we don't have answers to them. So my guess is, being a former PIO, I would push this back. 
until this operation is concluded. Yeah, it was just interesting to see that they had <laughs> scheduled that press conference at 1130, um, and um, now they're pushing it back for farther and for further and further. And uh, as we wait for this, um, this situation here with the suspect in the van to conclude, um, at this point, at 11 to 47, I got to assume that most of our viewers, including here in our streaming coverage, uh, are somewhat up to speed on what's been occurring. So many people get those breaking news alerts and, and woke up to the news this morning. Uh, but as we are now some 13 hours into the investigation, multiple hours into our live coverage, um, you, you got to assume a lot of people are up to speed here, but all of this stemming from the overnight or late night mass shooting in Monterey Park in which 10 individuals were killed, another 10 more that were injured in that shooting, and then a secondary incident that was uh, essentially thwarted in the city of Alhambra, both of them being dance studios where people were out Celebrating, uh, unknown if they unknown if they were competing, but uh, uh, celebrating with with dance uh, uh, last night on a Saturday night when all of this unfolded. And at the dance studio in Alhambra, witnesses say they saw the suspect leaving in that white cargo van that we were seeing on the left side of our screen on our live pictures. Um, so that is the vehicle that they were describing to law enforcement. Um, something of note: we just got word as well that the press conference has actually been pushed back even more um, to noon so we're waiting for more details again as the uh, law enforcement tries to figure out what they want to do in this situation here and perhaps waiting for these updates no doubt they're getting information fed to them and oftentimes mm -hmm. we know that they do uh, watch news reports as well to get the information um, as far as what they're seeing uh, someone there from the sheriff's department uh, was speaking just testing the mic yeah just testing the mic to make sure everything is uh, good to go there uh, but no doubt uh, at this point, uh, as we suspected, things going to continue to push back until we get all of the factual information um, confirmed from this location in Torrance. Uh, you can see the broad perimeter here that has been set up in the area of Sepulveda and Hawthorne in the city of Torrance. Uh, and speaking to that impact um, that we talked about earlier, the fact that this isn't just one community now, you have, you know, a wide ranging area that's been impacted by this event from the South Bay all the way over to the initial shooting location in the uh, San Gabriel Valley. Yeah, Monterey Park and then it moved to Alhambra and now we are in Torrance this morning. We've just gotten word that Air 7 has reestablished its shot right above so we can get a, a better perspective of the Bearcat vehicles surrounding the cargo van and the um, SWAT members on the other side of that Bearcat. We aren't again seeing much movement coming from inside inside that white vehicle. And the video there on the right side of your screen is the LA County Sheriff's helicopter that is on scene in Torrance. So we were talking about the uh, the distance between the two investigations. So instead of driving, they uh, were able to land that helicopter, at least get some boots on the ground as far as the Sheriff's Department response um, as all of this uh, develops and unfolds. Uh, certainly, uh, Bruce, I would agree with you. You have far more experience, but uh, you know the tone and the stance, the posture of these uh, SWAT members lead you to lead you to believe that if the suspect is in this white van, that he could be incapacitated because you don't have any guns drawn anymore. The officers that were closer have moved back. The uh, the deputies and SWAT members that are behind that Bearcat, you know, have their backs to the vehicle. It just leads you to believe that the sense of urgency has diminished a bit, and you wonder, how do they know that? How do they know what's happening inside that van? Yeah, you're 100% correct, and that's the posture that we're seeing from the SWAT officers and the general law enforcement in the area. Uh, the problematic part comes in now. They do have to make entry into that van. They do have to have paramedics. Uh, which are part of the SWAT team makeup uh, to go in and possibly render aid to the suspect if he is still alive or even if he is, you know, deceased, they still have to go do that. And, and we the SWAT officers have that. And we saw them use that drone, that, that Torrance PD used a drone to see what was inside the vehicle without getting too close with an officer um, or, or a canine at all. So um, that was interesting to watch the body language change right after using that drone. Yeah, they may have seen something on the drone footage 
uh, which leads them to believe the suspect is incapacitated and or deceased uh, in some way, shape or manner. And so that is why the posture changed, as you just said. And the timing is interesting because it lines up. It makes sense. I want to say it was probably about 90 minutes after the sheriff's department revealed that they were looking possibly for a white cargo van that they located this one, um, which gives, you know, agencies enough time for that be on the lookout to go out for agencies around Southern California to look out for a suspicious white cargo van. And around that time, enough uh, time for that information to disseminate to other agencies. That's when this van was located so, so many miles away. Yeah, they put out a bolo, be on the lookout. It goes out agency-wide, all of Southern California. And I wouldn't even be surprised if they were about to put it out on the freeway signs also for the public to help them uh, apprehend the suspect. You have to um, assume that they had more than just the white van to pinpoint this one because we said earlier, it's somewhat of a generic vehicle. There are so many of them. Earlier this morning from Air 7 HD, we saw multiple white cargo vans within the vicinity of the actual shooting that were still on scene. Uh, so maybe there was a license plate that was captured somewhat on surveillance that helped pinpoint that, yeah, this is the one we're looking for. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, this just goes to the credit of investigators for the sheriff's department working with their federal partners and their local county partners of just how they got the information out so quickly and so accurately to possibly end this with this vehicle and the suspect. Now, if the uh, suspect is incapacitated in the van here, what is the next move that SWAT, uh, SWAT members will, will do? Well, they do, they have to go in. Uh, there's no way to candy coat that. That means that they will break one of the windows if it's not already broken as what we talked about. Uh, they may deploy a canine uh, into that window to rouse the suspect, so to speak, or to get a response, and then go from there. That canine will be supported by uh, SWAT officers who are heavily armed uh, because the canine you know, I know people don't want to hear this, but the canine is a law enforcement tool. And there have been canines that have sacrificed their life in operations just like that for their handlers. Yeah, uh, we've seen that happen. Uh, it's uh, equally uh, heartbreaking, and uh, a lot of people typically get upset about that. But uh, and we as, certainly as hope spoke, that won't be the, the yeah, case here. Yeah. Yeah, but they will have to make entry into that vehicle. Um, you know, maybe they might use the third Bearcat to maybe rip a door off that vehicle, attach some sort of chain and hook uh, to give them an operational viewing and area where they could possibly enter safely. And Bruce Thomas, at this point, it's almost like nothing would surprise us. We've seen situations with prior pursuits with a suspect of Paper. tear gas and non-lethal or even lethal shots going into a vehicle. And we thought that the suspect must have been killed. And sure enough, the door opens and the guy walks out. That was a case roughly a month or two ago. Um, so even if you think one thing, until it's done and in custody and that door opens, you just don't know for sure. Can you speak to that possibility, you know, in, until they open that door? All right, we might have lost Bruce here. Um, but again, we are waiting for new information in about five minutes or so with that um, press conference possibly happening at noon might give us a clearer picture of what's happening in Torrance right now with this scene. Um, we are also uh, hoping to find out, um, you know, who the suspect is and why they did this. Sure, we have the photo of right. this uh, suspect that has been identified. His name has not been released. Uh, there's that image again, three images, uh, we believe, from the same location, uh, just different angles of this suspect, an Asian man. Um, earlier in the morning, he was uh, described as being up to 50 years old, and certainly looks like that age range would be uh, appropriate. Uh, his name not released, and it's unclear, for what it's worth, uh, which location these uh, 
surveillance images came from, there were two locations of concern. One was the initial mass shooting location in Monterey Park at the uh, Star Dance Hall. Uh, that was the first location. The second location was in Alhambra, where the suspect was apparently disarmed by patrons. So we don't know where these Im images came from, uh, but the alert went out that this is the guy they're looking for. And we'd like to bring in now former L.A. County Sheriff Jim McDonald on the phone with us this morning. You are watching our coverage here of this uh, barricade situation with the suspect possibly in this white cargo van. What do you make of this scene unfolding? You know, I've been listening uh, for a few minutes. Uh, I heard Bruce, Bruce Thomas's assessment, and I would agree with that, that the posture taken by the uh, Special Enforcement Bureau operators at the scene, uh, the, the fact that they, they don't have the side door secured, but they do have the vehicle secured, uh, would indicate that a uh, very strong possibility the suspect uh, is inside uh, incapacitated. So as we watch this, uh, this whole thing uh, play out, I, I, there's a, a lot going on behind the scenes, uh, both here at this tactical uh, uh, scene, but also uh, on the investigation, investigative follow-up, looking for any additional information that they can get uh, that could potentially tie any additional uh, suspects into this case. And of course, doing the the, uh, the very uh, very time consuming and uh, and uh, investigative steps that are so important in today's investigation that just a handful of years ago that uh, would not be undertaken. The technical side, the uh, the uh, computer side, the cyber piece to this whole thing potentially. Uh, there's a lot going on, and then of course at the scene. Uh, all of the closed circuit TV cameras that might be there and other technical uh, aids that they may have in place in the city to be able to help identify somebody who was at the scene and, and then be able to uh, do an appropriate level of follow up. Absolutely. I mean, that's a great recap on what we've been discussing throughout the morning, the social media aspect, the surveillance cameras. And we know that the Monterey Park area and even where the shooting occurred, the building where the shooting occurred, uh, we saw multiple cameras pointing down on the parking lot on the entrance of that facility. Uh, former Sheriff Jim McDonald, this is, of course, a department that you led just over four years ago for a four year term. And knowing that the uh, Sheriff's Homicide Bureau is leading the investigation, um, what kind of confidence do you have that, that they're going to to wrap this up and they're going to get it right uh, they're as good as uh as you can get the uh, the homicide bureau uh, are uh, among the best anywhere uh likewise with the special enforcement bureau are handling the tactical scene and homicide bureau is going to take advantage of all of the resources they have from uh, a technical standpoint uh the the uh the experts from the the side of the uh, crime scene investigation and follow-up cyber experts uh, the, the beauty of being a large department and uh, the largest sheriff's department in the nation is that you have resources available to you to do anything that can possibly be done to further the, uh, the progress of the case. Now, we've had a lot of agencies involved in this case overnight and through the morning hours. We've had the FBI also involved in this, and we see uh, progress with this investigation and um, a, a possible suspect being apprehended within hours of, of this happening. Um, can you talk about the, the resources that are shared between these agencies and, and how helpful it can be in an investigation like this? Yeah, no, it's absolutely critical. When you look at the county of Los Angeles, it's uh, 88 cities plus all of the uh, massive unincorporated areas. 42 of those cities are contracting the uh, L.A. County Sheriff's Department for their policing services. But there's an awful lot of different jurisdictions involved in anything like this that happens, particularly when you have a, a particularly heinous crime like this committed with the suspect on the loose uh, after, the, uh, after the incident. Uh, everybody focuses on this. There's a potential grave threat to the uh, community and surrounding areas. So everybody, it's all hands on deck and everybody's focused on apprehending this suspect, identifying, isolating and apprehending the suspect. And uh, as we see here, they reap the federal resources, uh, state resources, as well as all of our partner agencies in the region uh, brought whatever they could to bear on this. And here we have, like you said, Within uh, a dozen hours, the suspect has uh, been located and, and that is playing itself out now there for uh, a conclusion.
Sure, and uh, for our viewers who are uh, tuning in here on our live streaming coverage, uh, the perspective of this being the fifth mass shooting in the U.S. this year, but the largest since Uvalde, Texas last year. So certainly on the mass shooting scale, uh, this is a significant one. Bruce Thomas was speaking uh, minutes ago about the collaboration on the training side with uh, these SWAT members. Uh, we have both Torrance police, and then we saw moments ago a Bearcat and personnel from the sheriff's SWAT arrive. How right. well does that collaboration work? Uh, how familiar are, are you with it? Oh, yeah. No, very, very familiar. And uh, the agencies do train together as much as possible. Uh, the three largest agencies in the county all have a SWAT team, uh, LAPD, LA Sheriffs, and Long Beach, as well as many of the uh, agencies that are more medium-sized. They also have part-time SWAT uh, elements that they're able to respond to uh, certain incidents in their own cities. And so we have people who put a lot of time, energy, and effort into being as good as they can be in this specialty. And it certainly does save lives. Their primary focus is to get to a scene, to try as best they can to isolate it, to ensure that there are no uh, community members around the scene that are still in harm's way. They're evacuated. And then once they have it isolated and uh, the situation under control from that standpoint, and then every attempt is made to de-escalate the situation, talk the suspect out of uh, his position of advantage if he's barricaded and be able to take them peacefully into custody. Uh, but they prepare for the worst and, and hope for the best and work toward the best resolution in all of these situations. And speaking about making sure that all the community members remain safe around this area, we were just taking a look at some video here um, of that drone that they were using to monitor the vehicle. Can you talk about the uh, technology like this drone that is so helpful when it comes to a barricade situation? Absolutely. I recall back when I was sheriff in 2015, we introduced drones to be able to be useful to us in situations like this, tactical situations and bomb squad situations and in trying to locate uh, lost hikers and, and missing persons in the uh, in the Angeles National Forest area. And there was uh, quite a bit of pushback at that time. And I think we've seen a transition in the public realizing the value that a drone can bring in being able to safely get eyes on a tactical scene or in, in the case of uh, an explosive device, the device itself, without putting our personnel in harm's way unnecessarily. In this case, a drone, uh, I believe this is probably being operated by Torrance. Torrance has a, one of the premier drone uh, operations uh, that I've seen. Uh, they, they use drones on a regular basis to assist in responding to patrol calls as well. And uh, they were very well versed in it and have been at it for some time. And so I think we're going to see more and more uh, drone usage uh, throughout the and uh, throughout the United States as, as we see the value of being able to uh, be able effectively to be able to get uh, a view of what's going on to be able, in this case, possibly, to be able to look in the windshield or the side windows and the rest of it is all you can see uh, not available it's all panel it's a panel truck so there's no windows in the back but to be able to see if the person is inside if they are in what condition they're in uh, before they approach uh, personally so uh, i'm sure that they have already made their assessment based on the posture here that uh, they're now going to move methodically into a, a position where they can exhaust all questions as to uh, the condition of the suspect as well as other additional suspects potentially in uh, in this location once they do that then they'll they'll make the approach if they were to see that there were additional suspects in uh, in the van that certainly would change the whole posture and it would become more of a uh, potentially a rescue effort at that point sure uh, so we'll interesting you, you see the bomb squad uh, just pulled up here uh, and they're going to make sure then that the vehicle is not will be trapped in any way and to, again, uh, you know, look at all potential uh, uh, outcomes to this and look at all uh, possible threats and be able to, to run those to ground before they, they do the actual approach. I was going to ask you about the response of the bomb squad uh, unit that arrived on scene just a, a moment ago. Uh, certainly you see that and you, you jump to the conclusion that there are explosives, but they even do more than just that. And they do work in collaboration uh, with uh, the SWAT units. Is that correct? They, they do there. We, uh, we join them all together as part of the Special Operations Bureau uh, or Special Enforcement Bureau. 
and uh, they work together very closely, and, and particularly in situations where uh, they have to breach a door in a location that's uh, potentially barricaded or to be able to, in effect, a rescue in somewhere where they have to use explosives to gain entry. Uh, certainly the uh, expertise of the bomb squad is uh, employed at that uh, time. It was also very interesting to watch the drone hover close to the van, but very close to the ground as well, checking to see all angles of this van to see if there was any possible planted explosives as well. So that was um, fascinating to watch the drone be a very helpful tool um, to these uh, team members out here. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very maneuverable. Uh, the camera set up on, uh, on these devices is very clear, high-definition cameras. And so they, they have an ability to be able to do a very thorough and quick assessment using these devices. Yeah, and you spoke so well to the debate that occurred years ago when you were serving as the uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff about drones. I mean, there was even outrage from some folks in the community about this uh, with concerns and complaints that, you know, drones were going to be invading our privacy and looking in our windows. And that is not the case. Yeah, not at all. The only windows they'll look in are in a situation like this, whether it's a vehicle or a, a residence or a business, to be able to see what the needs are for the tactical situation at hand. And certainly if there is someone injured inside, uh, they get they get that information and they were able then to, to make it a rapid entry and, and be able to pull that person out, get them to uh, the medical help they may need. And so it's, uh, to me, it's just a, a, a tremendous uh, lifesaver in the situations where it's used appropriately. Oh, absolutely. We got good perspective there just a moment ago from Air 7 HD on the broad perimeter that's unfolding here in this area of Torrance. Uh, Sepulveda and Hawthorne is the, uh, the general intersection where this uh, parking lot is located. Looking at everything that you're seeing in this coverage, do you think we are minutes away, moments away from them moving in? What are they waiting for? Yeah, I, I don't have uh, any uh, specific knowledge or information uh, more than you do at this point. But what, just watching the posture, they're going to take their time. It does not appear that there's any sense of urgency. They're going to do it thoroughly and, and uh, make sure that every eventuality or potential is looked at and exhausted before they make that approach uh, to the vehicle. And so as uh, you see additional resources being brought into place, uh, it looks like a based on this latest one, that they're going to be here for some period of time. And may I ask you, um, if correct me if I'm wrong, the Sheriff's Homicide Bureau, that is stationed within the city of Monterey Park. Am I correct? And if so, can you speak to that community? What's happened to them with this incident? Certainly, yeah. It, the uh, uh, Homicide Bureau is based in the city of Monterey Park and, uh, and certainly has that attachment uh, with the local residents. So when they rolled out on this last night, I'm sure this uh, certainly had uh, some uh, special meaning for them being so close to their headquarters, uh, but also the relationships that the Sheriff's Department and the Monterey Park Police Department enjoy with the community members in Monterey Park and the surrounding areas is a very strong one. And so earlier um, we saw the uh, Chester Chong, the uh, president of the Chinese uh, Chamber of Commerce out and speak into this issue and uh, and certainly you can you can tell by the way that it's being uh, viewed by the public that a tremendous amount of concern uh, quite a bit of fear and the uh, the Asian American community has been through some very difficult times in the past couple of years so again this on on top of all of that I'm sure is uh, is very shaking very uh, very unsettling to the whole community. Oh, absolutely. A lot of Asian Americans who are celebrating Lunar New Year this weekend, not just um, at Monterey Park, but at events all across Southern California, um, you know, are very torn by this. They don't know whether to mourn or celebrate the Lunar New Year because of um, this shooting that happened overnight. We, we do know there was a few cancellations. The Citadel outlets even canceled their celebration in light of this and in respect uh, for the those victims, um, but it, it's been very 
the community has been shaken to the core and outraged from what I am seeing online um, that there has been, we don't know for sure if this was, um, you know, the motivation, if it was a hate crime or if it was something more personal or a domestic dispute that has not been fully confirmed. But regardless, this was a very heavily predominant Asian American community with 65% Asian American. And it, it really, it really shocks them to the core when, when something like this happens, especially so close to that New Year, uh, Lunar New Year Festival, just a, a street away. But still many, so many questions as to why that suspect decided to shoot in that dance studio um, as opposed to the Lunar New Year celebration. Thankfully, he didn't. Um, but this is just a, a tragedy all around, and the Asian American community is certainly certainly heartbroken this morning. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a number of motivations have been put, put forward with this morning as to uh, why this occurred. I don't think we'll really know until the investigation plays itself out uh, in more depth. But uh, from what we've heard and what we see often in these mass shootings, that it, uh, it is somebody who feels that they've been disrespected for whatever reason, and they, they in their own way, feel that they're going to strike out at anybody uh, potentially uh, responsible or even anybody who may represent uh, somebody they feel is responsible in any way. And so when you try and look at these things, it's hard to be able to rationalize what happened because it's not a rational decision, obviously. And so this individual's background and, and uh, you know, all of the things that led up to this will be looked at in great detail as the investigation continues. What yeah. is that process like, looking into the background of a suspect? Yeah, I, will, I mean, it, it, and, and I don't know what the story is on this particular individual, but oftentimes, you know, you'll look at somebody's social media history, you'll look at the, uh, their, their presence online, what they've been involved in, what they're interested in, uh, queries that they've made, uh, web searches, uh, but also communications with others, and and have they expressed themselves in a in a way that it was threatening? What what could have been learned? What should have been learned? Who knew? Who else knew what uh, was going on in this regard? And so uh, certainly, and and I can't speak to this case, but one of the things you often look for is was this person tied in with other people? Is this something larger than what we're seeing here in this individual case? And so all of those things will be looked at, and and uh, any leads exhausted in that way. Um, and like you mentioned earlier, we have some of the best and brightest uh, working on this case with tremendous amount of experience and the and ability to work with our federal, state, and local partners in a way that I think could be a model for the rest of the country. Yeah, on that note, not only as a former sheriff do you have that perspective to what occurs in Monterey Park, prior to that, you were the police chief in Long Beach, much like Robert Luna, and so you worked, I got to assume, in collaboration with Torrance PD being a neighboring city there, so you're well aware of what they are capable of when it comes to these investigations. Yeah, very true. We, in uh, the county of Los Angeles, we have the Los Angeles County Police Chiefs Association, uh, which brings together chiefs uh, on a monthly basis to discuss trends, patterns, different things that you're seeing, but also uh, the ability to be able to share resources and to be able to network. And when you need something to have that type of relationship where one phone call will get you the resources uh, you need to supplement your own, uh, you know, you can't deploy enough people for something that is a very big incident in any individual city. So it's so critical that we have the partnerships that we have throughout the law enforcement community and I've been told by people from around the country and around the world that Southern California uh, really leads the way in that collaborative uh, approach to dealing with major crisis. We, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, have a lot of practice in doing that with all of the various types of natural disasters and other major events that we have here in the region. So we have uh, some of the best uh, and brightest, and they get to practice their trade on a, on a very frequent basis. So. Um, you know, we're thankful to, to have this uh, type of expertise here locally. And I was reminded of that prior to your time as L.A. County Sheriff and then the Long Beach Police Department, you also served with the LAPD. You've been all over, tons of experience. The Los Angeles Police Department, more than 9,000 sworn officers currently. Monterey Park has 75 sworn officers, certainly a smaller city of the 88 that you referenced in the county. That being said, 
What kind of toll does this put on a small police department? Clearly, we have the assistance from the sheriff's department this morning on the investigation, but there's still got to be a, a big weight on this department. Oh, absolutely. This department, uh, it is a, a, a relatively small uh, area uh, that is being policed by uh, a police department of 75. Uh, but any given time, there's a small fraction of that number out and available on the streets to re respond for calls for service. So when this event happened last night, local resources were clearly uh, overwhelmed and needed the support from surrounding agencies, the sheriff's uh, department, and and others, uh, our our state and local part, our state and federal partners as well. And everybody, no questions asked. When something like this happens, they respond. They get in, they get up, get in the car, and, and head to work. And not knowing how long they're going to be there before they come home, they're going to be there until the resolution of uh, of the case, in an effort to be able to protect the community. In a case like this, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is so egregious, and you have somebody who has taken so many lives and hurt so many others and, and has the ability to continue on that uh, type of behavior, that person has to be identified very quickly and taken into custody to protect the community. And that's what everybody is focused on and very much committed to. Absolutely. I, I wonder if you can speak to this. The Monterey Park Police Chief Scott Weiss, I believe his name is, he spoke earlier during the 830 news conference, and he said on the record that this is not connected to the Lunar New Year festival that was ongoing in Monterey Park earlier in the evening. That event was scheduled to wrap up at 9 p.m. Granted, this occurred within an hour after the event, less than a block away. What do you think? Can you say it's not connected definitively, or is that kind of still on the table? You have to assume that there were people who maybe spilled from one event to the next event, um, and the proximity of the two is just so incredibly close. Yeah, I mean, at first blush, you would you would assume that uh, you know that that it would, there would be a connection between the the uh, the crime and and the event, uh, bringing so many people together in a relatively small piece of real estate. Uh, but uh, Chief Weiss must have information that would indicate to him uh, to that level of certainty that uh, this was separate and apart from that in order for him to have said that this morning. So there's there's a lot that they don't feel comfortable, I'm sure, going out with at this early stage in the investigation, uh, but that they will speak to in greater detail later. Okay, we appreciate your insight on this, Jim. Um, we do want to uh, have you on standby real quick, but we want to throw to our reporter who is on the scene right now, Eyewitness News reporter Sophie Flay, live at that, that scene in Torrance. Sophie, what can you tell us? Irene, we just got here, but as you guys know, this standoff has been going on for over an hour. You can see behind me those two Bearcats sandwiching the white cargo van. Uh, you can't see the cargo van from this angle, but we do know, police have confirmed that the suspect is inside the cargo van. And LA County Sheriff Robert Luna just, you know, about a half hour ago released uh, photos of that suspect. And you can see over here, this has brought out a huge crowd. Uh, Sepulveda Boulevard and Hawthorne Boulevard, which is where we are right now, is completely shut off. Uh, they are just waiting uh, for this suspect to either come out. Um, you know, we don't know what is going to happen, but this has been going on for over an hour. The SWAT team is here. Monterey police, sheriffs, so many government agencies coming out here to try to get to the bottom of this and, and get a hold of the suspect. We will continue to update you guys as we learn more. Reporting live in Torrance, Sophie Flay, ABC7 Eyewitness News. And Sophie, as you were arriving on the scene for what it's worth for the community impact here, um, there are street closures. There is a broad perimeter that has kind of been expanding over the last hour or so. Uh, walk us through that. Was it difficult for you to get in? Um, is it causing, you know, some disruption there on the streets as you're arriving? Mark, absolutely. It was almost impossible for us to get here. So many of these streets are blocked off. There is yellow tape everywhere. There's, uh, you know, shopping centers around here where people are coming to park and watch this all unfold. Uh, so, yes, it is very hard to navigate the streets here in Torrance. Yeah, can you uh, talk about the atmosphere out there when it comes to the community reaction? I know all morning we've been hearing about shock and confusion, but that was in Monterey Park. Now this is a whole different scene in Torrance. Uh, 
What you said people are, are parking and watching. Describe the atmosphere and the reaction that you're seeing this morning. People are absolutely shocked and, and devastated uh, from the events that occurred overnight. Uh, you can see here people are parked. They're they're standing here. Oh, we are being asked to move right now. So, yep, we're gonna we're gonna move right now, you guys. Okay. So we're gonna send it back to you. Sophie, we appreciate it. Yep, understandable. Is that is a developing situation, perhaps a little too close to the uh, developing situation there with that white van. That was uh, Eyewitness News reporter Sophie Flay on the scene. And we, we've seen those images of the bystanders, the witnesses that are kind of uh, in the different shopping centers taking photos, mm -hmm. um, kind of watching what's going on. Law enforcement has to make sure anybody within sight of the incident needs to make sure they're back because should there be gunfire, should that actually get to that uh, state, it is a understandably very dangerous situation. Absolutely, and we have been monitoring the response uh, both here in Torrance and as we were mentioning in Monterey Park this morning, we had reporters out there talking to folks who are just trying to start their morning and waking up to this horrific news, just very confused as to what was happening, especially with that festival going on overnight, and um, they were expecting it to be another joyous day, but here we are facing another shooting um, in Monterey Park, and they were very, uh, uh, you know, devastated by by the news. So it's something that we're seeing throughout Southern California, the reaction pouring in, not not only in our region, but also across the world, um, hearing about this shooting, especially on a very, very prominent holiday for a, the Asian American community. Still joining us live this morning for our continuing coverage as we stream here through our ABC7 Los Angeles app is uh, our law enforcement expert, uh, I'm now being told Sheriff Jim McDonald, former Los Angeles County Sheriff Jim McDonald, still on the phone with us. Uh, thank you for uh, sticking with us on this uh, developing situation as we uh, move in there with that image from Air 7 HD. Uh, not a lot of movement. Uh, those SWAT members, uh, former sheriff, uh, are stationary, uh, looking like they're waiting for guidance, waiting for the call to move in. We saw the drone minutes ago. Um, is this a situation where they're analyzing that video? Can that video be viewed in real time? Do they already know what they've seen? Yeah, they, they, they can do it in real time. Uh, Torrance, has, as I mentioned earlier, uh, tremendous capabilities in that regard. So they were able to view it in real time and, and maybe going into greater detail, potentially uh, looking to enhance the uh, the video they're looking at to get greater detail. Um, hard to know exactly what the weight is right now uh, without m more information, but uh, clearly they have the situation uh, you know, in hand. The, the vehicle and under any circumstances is not going anywhere. Uh, the posture they're taking appears that uh, if there is someone in the in the van that they are in some way incapacitated and and not the threat that they might have been previously. So uh, I, I can't speak in greater detail to any condition or anything within there, but they're going to exhaust uh, all precautions in, in trying to be able to ensure that when they do approach and open that van that uh, everything has been weighed and, and it's the right time to do it. So. Uh, you can see there um, in the back you have uh, uh, a lieutenant, uh, a captain, and an operator uh, discussing what, uh, what is in front of them and what next steps are going to be uh, on your feed. And so uh, very familiar with uh, the two gentlemen uh, in the front there, uh, not so much the operator, but uh, they are among the best in the business. So uh, confident that all the right things are being done at this time to be able to make sure everything is as safe as it can be. I'm sure they're being very thorough, but yeah, big question for many people who are watching this coverage. Uh, what Will something happen in the next few minutes or will it take a few hours? We don't know at this point in time. And that's the same sort of mentality we also had for the investigation earlier in Monterey Park. We had that entire street shut down and the big question was, will this be investigated for several hours or will this last for several days? And Bruce Thomas, our other law enforcement expert, was mentioning to us that it could take days until that investigation is clear in Monterey Park. Uh, the Alhambra location in the meantime has been cleared.
and uh, former Sheriff Jim McDonald, you spoke as well about what's happening behind the scenes this morning. We have, uh, you know, a good perspective between Monterey Park, uh, that investigation, and then now what's happening here in Torrance on the investigation on the ground, which is certainly developing. But that behind the scenes effort, what's happening, you know, in offices, uh, using uh, the computer networks and social media, that has to be uh, incredibly large, maybe if not larger, to learn more about this suspect. Is it a race against the clock? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, there, there's a lot of people uh, that you don't see. There's a number of people out at the scene, obviously, at uh, both both scenes or all three scenes. Uh, all right, former of, Sheriff right. Jim McDonald, I'm going to put you on pause. We have a news conference that's about to begin. We are going to join our viewers on air as well. This is Eyewitness News with live breaking news. Good afternoon. We are interrupting our 2023 Australian Open Tennis Week 1 highlights. You can continue watching it on our digital channel 7.2. Check your local listings on how to access that. But right now, we go to this breaking news. Law enforcement is giving an update on this deadly mass shooting in Monterey Park. Let's listen in. You regarding the mass shooting that occurred last night. Um, Sheriff Luna. Uh, thank you, uh, Captain. Uh, as most of you were here earlier today, uh, it's very important uh, for our community to be updated on something as significant and tragic as this. So we're back up here, uh, up making ourselves available to you for any questions. I think uh, you're aware that at 1118 uh, this morning, uh, we released a bulletin uh, with a picture or an image uh, of what we believe to be the suspect. Uh, we haven't named him. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, there are, we have a lot of resources uh, in the Sheriff's Department, working with other agencies uh, to make sure, again, that our priority beyond taking care of the victims and survivors of this horrible incident, that th we get this man off the streets. Uh, so uh, I think that you all, all of you have received this. Uh, I want to address uh, also uh, that there is a tactical incident uh, that's occurring in the city of Torrance uh, that are, is being covered. Uh, people have asked, uh, is that your suspect? Uh, we don't know. Uh, as I said earlier today, uh, we had a vehicle that was described as a white uh, box van, I guess you'd say, a van of interest, and there's a van that looks just like what we, was described to us in the city of Torrance. Uh, it's a barricaded suspect situation. Uh, we are working uh, with one of our partner agencies, the Torrance Police Department, to resolve that. Uh, we believe there is a person inside of that vehicle. Uh, we don't know uh, their condition, but we're going to handle that in the safest manner uh, that we possibly can. Uh, to try and identify that person. Uh, could it be our suspect? Possibly. Uh, but at this point, uh, if we're doing our jobs correctly, we're not only looking at that situation or scenario, but we're making sure that we're looking at any and every possibility. So I do encourage our community, if they have any leads, uh, maybe they saw the picture of this individual, uh, to come forward with any information that they believe may help us in this very critical and important investigation. That's going to be very important. I also uh, want to um, talk about the victim survivor side of this. Uh, in response to the, our mass shooting this morning, um, a victim resource center has been set up at the Langley Senior Citizen Center located at 400 West Emerson Avenue. And I want to make sure uh, that the appropriate victims, families, friends take advantage of that resource. There are many people behind me. Some of them will speak, uh, representatives from different agencies and there's so many parts to this, right? The response, uh, the, the medical side of it, 
but as we're looking for this suspect, we will not forget the victims and survivors. And it's important because I can, you can just imagine the trauma that they've experienced, and it's our responsibility to wrap our arms uh, around them. So representatives from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation and the District Attorney's Office and uh, the District Attorney George Gascon is standing here uh, with us. Uh, the Red Cross, the Department of Health Victim Services are at the center to assist the victims, survivors, and their families. Uh, if anyone believes their relative may be a victim, please contact representatives at this Victims Resource Center that I'm talking again about. And again, if you think that you have questions, uh, you're upset, you haven't been able to locate a family member that you think's involved, please go out to this victim center and we will assist you. That's why we're there. Um, at the center, we also have members from the Psychological Services Bureau um, from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Uh, and as we uh, go hour by hour, if we see any other needs, uh, there are multiple uh, agencies that have contacted us. Uh, everybody wants to help, which is amazing uh, in this time because um, uh, we need to depend on each other uh, in difficult cir circumstances like this. Uh, so with that, I am going to turn it over uh, to the next speaker. And I'll be here for questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sheriff Luna, and I also want to uh, congratulate and, and actually um, give credit to the first responders as well as our, our sheriff team and the city of uh, Monterey Park, the chief of police, the many deputies, and as well as uh, the DA's office, um, Mr. Gascon, and also to our elected officials that are here with us this morning representing the city of Monterey Park. Um, I am, uh, as you know, very heartbroken to hear of the news of what occurred with the individuals that lost their lives. Um, but I think now we have to look at, at the victims, the survivors, and as the sheriff said, this is what the county does best. Help provide uh, assistance, uh, mental health services, any kind of relief that is possibly and legally conceivable for us to provide. We are here to support all of the families and this community and help them in their healing. Um, it's tragic what happened, but let's also think about the people who put their lives out there on stake every single day as well to protect us, our safety, well-being, and also our physicians, the ones that I can tell you of at LACUSC that are right now treating at least uh, four of the other victims there. I also want to uh, say that they have also devoted their their service to help providing protections for all of our residents in, in our community. The county's Office of Emergency Management has also been providing support and leveraging mental health resources at this very traumatic time, along with the city of Monterey Park, which as you know and you can see, are very united and very resilient. Again, a heartfelt uh, no to the families who lost their loved ones and to those that are recovering at this time. Uh, and, with, and with the help of the public, we can help to identify uh, the individual that was behind uh, this incident. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, this was supposed to be a moment, a, 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 a time of celebration. We're celebrating Lunar New Year's, which is such an important component of many communities around LA. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to express my condolences not only to the victims, family, but the entire AIPI community. My office has multiple roles in this case. Number one, uh, by state law, we ran a mass, cas mass casualty response unit. And since very early this morning, we began to mobilize uh, countywide resources in my office as well in order to provide services to, to the victim's family and to the community. And this is work that will not only it began today, but quite frankly, will go on for months and possibly years. You know, the impact of trauma uh, from this event goes on for a very long time. I want to thank the Sheriff's Department, Sheriff Luna, and the Monterey Park Police Department. Uh, for the incredible work they have done. We've had also uh, our own law enforcement uh, component has been here 
uh, since very early on, working first with the Monterey Police Department, and we will continue to do that with the sheriff and other partners. Um, clearly, depending on in whether an individual is arrested, uh, we will talk about prosecution at a later date, and that is appropriate. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the U.S. Justice Department, our U.S. Attorney, who is here today with us. Again, this is a this is a joint effort, and depending on in what the conditions are, uh, the Bureau of Investigation is also part of this work. But what I want to make sure that we get across uh, to our entire community is that we are a united community. When one of us is attacked, we're all here together. And regardless of what the motive was for this horrendous impact, uh, for this horrendous event, we will continue to work together. We're here with Monterey Park, with the San Gabriel Valley, with our entire community. And we're not only here today, we will be here every day until the work is done. Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out right now. And I want to speak to the Monterey Park community directly. Our police department, our city continues to provide protective services throughout this incident. We work with our partners both on a county, a state, and a federal level and try to resolve the situation as best we can and take our suspect into custody. The sheriff talked about the Langley Center. That's where our victim assistance uh, has been set up. I asked that the uh, partners in the press give those victims' families a little bit of space over there so that they can get information. You can imagine when they woke up this morning after the Lunar New Year festivals from yesterday and they may not have found their loved one next to them in the bed or at home and how that's affecting everybody in this community right now. Uh, I want to ensure everybody that as we get more information, we'll put it out as much as we can. And the Monterey Park Police Department is here as your partner in the community to keep it safe. Any information that people may have related to the uh, incident, they can call the police station. We will try to get information out as soon as we get it. I have a lot of uniformed police officers that are out on the street. Every single one of them is committed to the community. And if someone in the community has a question, has a concern, is scared, that officer's out there to make sure that they're okay. And all they have to do is reach out and ask the question. I'm going to open it up to any questions. Thank you. Sheriff, can I ask you to talk about, and again, I know that you're limited in what you can say for a number of reasons. You talked about the situation in Torrance right now, and you said that you don't, if, if, if the suspect did, you asked yourself rhetorically, and you said it's possible. Is it also possible that a person who's in there, whether it's the suspect or not, is no longer alive? Is that a possibility? Yes, it is a possibility. Sheriff, are you aware of any one who's heard any gunshots that would make people think that was a possibility? I don't have that information here in front of me, but that's also possible from, yes. Sheriff, sure, do you have a name because you released a picture, or are you withholding the name and why is that? Uh, we are withholding the name at this time. Uh, and I, as I stated earlier, it is a priority to apprehend this person. And we have a lot of resources uh, throughout this entire region. And we believe if we're putting his name out, um, uh, that will inhibit our ability to potentially arrest the suspect if he's out there, or maybe flee. So please, please be patient with us. You've been patient thus far. And this is why we're going to keep our word that we're going to continuously update you uh, because the community, I understand, they're thirsty for information. And yes, we did put his picture out, and that's because from a public safety perspective, we want people to see who this is and then give us any information uh, that they may have about his whereabouts so that we can safely take him into custody. Is there yeah. any priority, but do we know if this individual was working by himself and the motive of this situation? No, we don't. And we have to keep all those options open. Was he by himself? Were there other suspects? We, our detectives, are looking at uh, every angle. Uh, and, uh, and that's the important thing that good investigators do, right? They keep every option on the table until we know for sure uh, what the motive was, who else was involved. And uh, uh, other than getting this suspect into custody, 
uh, and providing the best case to either the district attorney or the U.S. attorney's office. Uh, our job is to collect every shred of this awful puzzle that has been laid out by this suspect. So, work in progress. Do you believe that this is a domestic violence situation? And that's what you're We've been asked that, and we're looking at every angle, whether it's domestic violence. The question was asked earlier about a hate crime. You have to leave the door open for any possibility until we understand uh, who this suspect is, what his motives are, where he came from, what his intention was. Uh, at, at the end of the day, as a sheriff's department investigative unit, we are responsible for providing all the facts and evidence uh, to our partners in the prosecutor's office so we can prosecute this individual to the full extent of the law. I don't have that information right now uh, in front of me. Uh, we should be able to follow up with you on that as this incident goes on. Sheriff, would you be able to confirm at this point that the uh, suspect in the second location was in fact the same one who perpetrated this mass shooting at the uh, in Monterey Park? We believe it is. I'm not confirming it 100 percent because, again, we still have to put this whole thing together. Uh, but the picture or the image that we're showing you is from the second location, uh, and we believe that they are both connected. But again, we leave every option on the table. We have to leave it open because we don't want to focus on one area while someone else is getting away. So, so got to be open to all of it. Can you confirm How the name was of the two I mean, for a while, by the patrons at Lai Lai Dance Hall, what kind of weapon was recovered from it? How did he get away? Earlier today, uh, in regards to the weapon, um, uh, I, I could tell you that it's uh, not a high-powered assault rifle, um, but I don't want to get into the specifics on the weapon. In time, we will. Everyone will get exactly what that is, but I don't want to say anything that will impact uh, or create more challenges for us in trying to apprehend uh, this person. So, sure. I think Two more questions. 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 Sheriff, uh, finally, can you explain to us then, since the last briefing, what is new other than the photo? Uh, well, I mean, the update, you got everyone here. I'm just trying to, trying to ascertain if there's anything new other than the photo. We have the photo that's new. There's the incident that's occurring in Torrance where uh, obviously there's a lot of questions and concerns about that. That's the update that we have. There's nothing from that. You're not, you're not able to tell us anything. Asking if there's anything definitive that you can tell us. Uh, I'm giving you definitive information now, and I'm giving you the information that we have. And I had a choice uh, to sit back and not come out here and be available, uh, or come out here like we talked about earlier, and every time we get even a shred of an update to give you what we have, because there's significant public interest in this, as there should be. So uh, if we call you out here in two hours, uh, I'm hoping there's more information to provide um, because I want this solved uh, as much as anybody out there does. We want to, this has been painful. Let me go over here. I don't have that information in front of me. Yeah, typically I don't put out the specific locations just out of respect for the business. Uh, I'm sure as the day goes on, we'll be putting down those specific names of uh, the businesses. Because as you can imagine, if you're the business owner there and you had this horrible incident, they're traumatized as well. So one more me, question. One more. Let me go over here. You know. Um, it is normal that when we have victims of violent crime, uh, we don't talk about specific uh, hospitals. 
Uh, and I'm going to share just a quick story as to why we don't. Uh, earlier, it may have been mentioned that they were at a specific hospital and somebody called one of those hospitals to say something along the lines that they want to go and finish the job. That is absolutely horrible. So again, um, I, I don't believe that's the inference. That, please, these victims and survivors are dealing with so much. Let's not traumatize them more. So um, yeah, and be patient with us. and. Um, our Sheriff's Information Bureau will put out another time uh, where we're coming out, and I hope to have even better information. But as of right now, that's what we have. Uh, and again, thoughts and prayers to all the families involved in this. It's, it's, it's a horrible incident for our county. So thank you very much. Yes, over there. In Spanish. All right, you are listening live there. That was the latest news conference from Monterey Park with uh, Sheriff Robert Luna, other speakers, including LA County Supervisor Hilda Solis and LA County District Attorney George Gascone, all speaking at the mic as we are gathering the very latest information on this deadly mass shooting that occurred late last night in the city of Monterey Park. Still, those numbers remain the same. You see on your screen, 10 killed and 10 injured in the mass shooting. And while that news conference was ongoing, on the right side of your screen, you still see it there, and now we have a ground image on the left side of the screen. Those images are both from the city of Torrance. So there's a lot at play here. What's happening at this location is you see the ground shot and the aerial shot is a vehicle that they believe could be the suspect from this mass shooting. Sheriff Luna using very delicate wording could be the suspect. They believe it's possible that it's him. So there's a lot at play uh, to confirm that, uh, but certainly they are taking it seriously that this vehicle matches the description. They have released the image of the suspect. They have not released his name. The sheriff did confirm that they have a name, but they did not want to put it out right now. We, of course, have the crew on the scene. That includes reporter Sophie Flay. Uh, Sophie has confirmed that we have the LA County bomb squad in hazmat on team on scene as well as they investigate this vehicle uh, before they move in any closer. And while that news conference was going on, we saw the LA County Sheriff uh, Bearcat, that SWAT vehicle right there to the right of your screen on the bottom right, move alongside that white van to get a closer look. It was right against the vehicle. Yeah, we were watching that as that press conference was going on. We also want to go back out to our ground reporter, eyewitness news reporter Sophie Flay with the latest. We just heard that press conference and Sophie, what are you seeing out there from your vantage point this morning? OK, we'll put Sophie on standby. We're not hearing Sophie's mic. Oh, there OK, it is. Sophie, oh. go ahead. We hear you now. You're good now. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? We can. OK, yeah. Great. Uh, Mark, Irene, we are here in Torrens on Sepulveda Boulevard and Hawthorne Boulevard. Right behind me, as you can see, we, we can zoom in here. You can see that white cargo van sandwiched between two Bearcats and, and like you said, another one kind of just moved in there. And we have just confirmed now that the bomb squad and hazmat team have moved in. And, and in that press conference, you, we learned that they're not sure if there are hazardous materials inside that, that cargo van. So they are taking all precautions. And everyone's here. I mean, Torrens Police, the SWAT team, LA County Sheriff, everyone coming together to uh, to, to handle the situation uh, carefully and diligently like they've mentioned um, LA County Sheriff Robert Luna released photos like you said of the suspect uh, not that long ago um, and they are now just waiting here as we mentioned before it was impossible to get over here so many streets blocked off and so many community members have come out to kind of watch this scene unfold That Bearcat move through the area. It's on the move once again, and it has just been trying to survey that van. As you mentioned, we also saw the drone that was taking a look inside the windshield and around the vehicle. As you mentioned, Sophie, that uh, they're erring on the side of caution because we don't know um, if there are any explosives inside or around that vehicle. So, Sophie, we appreciate your report this morning and giving us a good perspective of uh, things on the ground there. And we, we do see this Bearcat being very active, um, getting very close to the driver's side of the van. We saw earlier that the window there was smashed. 
Um, so it might have given them a clearer view of what's in the back of that van. Yeah, that's a very interesting position that it's taken uh, in the moments prior to this. It was moving alongside of that van, but now kind of pointed right towards it. We have a reporter in Monterey Park, Leticia Juarez, on standby. But if we can hold, I think this image is worth staying on. Let's see. Do we still have a uh, former Los Angeles care? Uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff Jim McDonald, is he still with us? He is the director of USC Safe Communities Institute. He's been mm. providing really important insight and perspective as to what we're seeing on the ground uh, this morning here in Torrance for this part of the uh, investigation. Uh, Jim, are you there? Unfortunately, it doesn't. Oh, are we here? Yep. Yeah, I'm still on. Okay, now this image that we're seeing, this Bearcat with the LA County Sheriff's Department, it's taken a different position, kind of pointing directly towards the driver's side window of that white van. Um, you know how this process works. Uh, tell us about what we're seeing, what could happen next. What does this all mean? Yeah, they're using the Bearcat because they're in a position of advantage uh, structurally that is... Uh, uh, as strong a, a foundation to take a good put themselves in a safe position that uh, should something happen, should somebody open fire on the vehicle, uh, they're relatively safe in that position. So as they move forward now, they're looking to see everything they can see. It's a panel van, so you don't have the ability to look in the rear windows or any side windows. So they're trying to get as much information as they can by uh, basically hitting this thing from every angle they can to include the uh, the uh, drones. And so as they, they go forward, if they can, they'll also be in a position with hazmat and the bomb squad out there to be able to try and obtain readings uh, should there be any hazardous materials there to be able to, in the parts per million, figure out do we have an elevated level of any substance. And that's very helpful then in deciding next steps. So there's uh, a lot of science goes on now that uh, a few years ago was not possible, but uh, they have all of that, uh, you know, at their disposal. So our hopes is that this is a safe, uh, a safe position for them to be in and that they can uh, as quickly as uh, appropriate be able to bring some resolution to this and, and uh and, and some closure to the people who are at this particular scene, at least. And we'll stop you right there. Uh, you may be on a slight delay. SWAT officers have moved in to the vehicle. They are at the door preparing to make entry. They have broken the uh, passenger side window. That window is now open. They are opening, uh, potentially opening the door. There is about more than a half dozen armed officers right at the door. Perhaps the side door will be the next to open. We now have the passenger side door open. Guns are drawn as they are moving in on this vehicle. You got to assume they believe this individual is incapacitated. The fact that they are going inside first. He's reaching over the lead officer to the driver's side. He has moved the seat and potentially this uh, sliding door here on the side is going to open next. Yes, they have their guns drawn. As you mentioned, um, the uh, Bearcat on the other side of the vehicle, making sure that they are safe from that angle as well. But we're waiting to see what the officers will do next. They've just broken the passenger window, opened the, that, that side of the, the van, about to open the side door. Um, they are all in position. One officer has just gotten into the passenger seat and taking a look back there. It doesn't seem like they are on high, high alert. Just I mean, the fact that he the, just uh, went all the right. way inside the vehicle, the body posture there. It seems like they they are not seeing too much of a threat at this point in time, but they are, of course, still on guard. Um, one of the officers still appearing back okay. there. The, it's uh, not a sliding door. Open. The doors are opening. Taking a look inside. It's kind of hard to see from our view. It looks like they're still but, looking even further yes. back behind that door opening. They're pulling something out. Looks like a, a blanket of some sort. And former Sheriff Jim McDonald still on the phone with us. We, we thank you for sticking with us here. I mean, we're watching as everyone is at these images. Uh, this was a, a barricade situation for 
well over two hours here in Torrance, uh, the intersection of Hawthorne and Sepulveda near the Del Amo Fashion Center, now playing out live here on ABC7 Eyewitness News on air and online, abc7.com. And the situation has been unfolding here in Torrance since roughly a little past 11 o'clock. So it's been almost a couple hours uh, since we first saw this van uh, swarmed by Bearcats and officers moving in. So they have been monitoring for the past couple hours to make sure that there were no threats to any officers. They had a drone circling this van for a while, checking for um, explosives possibly in and around the vehicle for any movement inside the vehicle. Uh, we are still waiting to see and hear what is inside, if it was uh, the suspect they have been looking for, if it is that suspect with another person possibly. We don't know at this point in time, but it looks like that Bearcat is um, moving away from the vehicle on the driver's side of the van. Gosh, even with the posture, which uh, was somewhat calm, given all the circumstances, it was really tense to watch that, not knowing what these uh, SWAT individuals uh, would find upon opening the vehicle. You even have one gentleman walking away there. So uh, we don't have the best vantage point to see all the way inside, including all the way in the back portion of that van, but it's still unclear if an individual uh, was in fact located in that vehicle, um, they are continuing to, to comb through that vehicle. Um, I was just so impressed by that initial SWAT officer who walked in through the front passenger side to uh, get that door open. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, they had some good information from the SWAT Bearcats that were, uh, in, were there, had it pinned, and then from the drone that was looking in through the front dash. Uh, but still, uh, it's a tense moment nonetheless. You just never know. Yeah, you can never fully assume um, that that vehicle is completely safe. Um, but we did watch that officer break the front window, uh, the, the passenger front window, and reach in, unlock the vehicle. Um, it's, it's very difficult to see from our, our vantage point what's inside the van, and we may not know for a bit of time what exactly they find because they do control, um, law enforcement does control the information that is released to the public as they um, continue their investigation. So we are just watching all of this unfold live. Um, many people still reeling and outraged and emotional over the shooting that happened last night. Absolutely. Jim McDonald joining us again. Again, he's been on the phone with us, director of USC Safe Communities Institute. Um, you've seen the images now. Uh, I believe you were on a delay, but I'm sure you've seen the images now from Air 7 of those SWAT members going in. Uh, right. What do you make of what you saw? Yeah, it appears from what we know that they approached, they made sure that, uh, you know, that what they had uh, initially thought was confirmed. Uh, one of the operators then, as you mentioned, uh, you know, took the initiative to go in and be able to open the rear panel doors so that others could go in. Uh, there was one of the operators there with a backpack indicating that he was likely the tactical paramedic uh, on scene. And so if there was a, a need to render aid, medical aid, there was an ability to do that immediately. Uh, that does not appear to have been the case, and uh, that person also has the ability to be able to make a pronouncement uh, as to whether that individual, if there is uh, one in there, from we, we don't know anything for sure at this point, uh, but to, to pronounce somebody deceased as well, if that was uh, what the circumstances uh, dictated. Sure. I, I got to assume, you know, jump into conclusions from what we've seen here, that there are two options, either the van's empty or if there was or is an individual in there, that person is deceased. Uh, we can't see a person deceased from our vantage point. There's a portion of the van with no windows uh, inside the doors to the left that they were searching. It's unclear if there is a possible person suspect in that portion of the van, uh, but the law enforcement officers, those SWAT members, they have, in most part, stepped away. There still are some to the uh, driver's side door side, but those uh, those team members have stepped back from the van. They've gone through uh, the initial search of the vehicle. Uh, so there certainly was not a live suspect in the vehicle. 
if there was someone in that vehicle, that suspect uh, is passed away. The other option is that they did not find anyone. That would be a major concern. And again, uh, we are still waiting to hear from law enforcement on an update on this. We, we in our last press conference that we, we heard from them um, roughly about 45 minutes ago, we didn't have many updates on this situation. Um, but they did say that it, the suspect that they had been looking for was possibly in this white cargo van because it matched the description of what they had been looking for throughout the entire morning. Mm. Run this scenario by the possibility that the suspect was following the news updates and the alerts that law enforcement had put out that they were looking for mm -hmm. a white cargo van and it was ditched here. Um, that certainly is a possibility and that this is where the vehicle was found. Um, that it matched the description, the possibility that they had the license plate and, and connect the dots on that. But after two plus hours, maybe three hours here on scene at this location, they maybe have not found anything inside in terms um, of a suspect. Uh, Jim McDonald, that obviously is speculation, but everything has to be on the table. Um, sure. We can only see what we see. And Jim, is that possibly why they are withholding some information? Okay, new information. Yeah. Uh, hold on, uh, Jim, there actually is a body. Yeah. There is a, a body um, in yeah. the driver's seat of the van. We okay. did not have a good yeah. uh, we did uh, not have good perspective on that earlier, and now we can see it. Of course, we're not going to zoom in, but I had eyes yeah. on it a moment ago. Um, and there is a man who was in the driver's side slumped over of this van. Um, yeah. Wow, what a development. Okay, speak to that. Yeah, you know, that makes sense because if this was an abandoned van, they would have cleared it earlier, uh, taken every precaution. But if there was no one in there, then the posture would have been different and they would have continued uh, doing the normal procedure for the investigation, the impound and uh, and so forth. Uh, that didn't happen. And the, the, the reason for the delay was, as you now know, uh, a suspect uh, in the van uh, and apparently deceased at the scene. And so when uh, the press conference was held and, and uh, Sheriff Luna mentioned that we don't want to jump to any conclusions, you have the van, it could be it could be the right van and not the right suspect at the time. So there's a number of different options that you can't press a redo button if you don't get it right. So they want to slow things down. They want to take every precaution. But they also realize that when they have, uh, in this case, the, the scene here again in Torrance, as well as Monterey Park and Alhambra, uh, they have to exhaust all investigative methods to be able to capture what they can, because once you open it up, you no longer have the ability to go back and to be able to uh, then complete the investigation. The, the scene has been compromised. And so they will take uh, take their time in, in moving through this investigation and follow up. And again, as we saw here with this uh, white van, uh, it was fairly uh, clear, although you can't say that it is speculation uh, prior to now that there was an individual in the van and that they were incapacitated. And that uh, really dictated then what we were seeing on the scene, that you had, um, you know, the, the SWAT officers there, but not in a high state of readiness. Uh, it was very clear to them probably from the beginning that this individual uh, had passed and was no longer a threat. And that uh, and that dictated the, the, uh, the test that we saw here on the live yeah, they probably spotted him ahead of time and were taking their time to assess if there were any other threats possibly with this vehicle, maybe bomb explosives or anyone else inside the vehicle. That's why they were out there since about 11 o'clock this morning. But wow, what a development in this investigation, um, you know, not even a day after um, that crime happened overnight in Monterey Park. Yeah, just 12 hours after uh, the shooting that occurred at 1020 last night in which 10 individuals were killed, another 10 more that were uh, wounded. And Jim McDonald, you know, when you have a situation like this, you lose the investigative possibility to try this individual, to gather more from them, to interview them. There are so many questions. Uh, it, it appears that in most situations, you'd want to keep that suspect alive to to figure out what were they thinking, what was the motive, why, and was there anybody else involved? No, absolutely. I mean, the sanctity of life drives what we do, and and certainly if there was uh, 
if there was any indication that this individual was alive from the beginning, that uh, they would have taken uh, more urgent, assertive steps to be able to get the medical aid. It was obviously uh, from their from their behavior clear that that wasn't the case. Um, but again, as going back to the press conference with Sheriff Luna, uh, the, the number of moving parts in something like this, and he referred to the human side. Uh, the number of victims, all of the impact on all of their families, the number of people injured and scarred maybe for the rest of their life, their their life has been changed, as well as all of their families. And then the community, uh, you know, the, the perception of safety and, and their small community for something like this to happen uh, and be now become uh, a focal point for, for the world media. Uh, again, uh, very sad, very tragic for everybody involved, but certainly the people uh, well, many people will live with a lot of pain for the rest of their, their life uh, as a result of this uh, incident uh, last night. Yeah, absolutely. Very heartbreaking. This this is a, a dramatic situation for so many communities here. Um, we do want to go out to our eyewitness news reporter, Leticia Juarez, in Monterey Park at the Reunification Center, where families and friends of the victims there um, can get answers and ask uh, questions to law enforcement. So, Letty, what can you tell us? Well, for anyone that's been impacted, whether it be a family member or a victim or a witness who saw what occurred, they can come down here to the Langley Senior Center, which is located on the 400 block of West Emerson. Uh, we haven't seen too many people going in, just a couple people trickling in. Like uh, right now, we do see some folks uh, going in. Uh, they've been in probably about three others before them. Now we're seeing a couple more folks. They're just allowing them to come in here and seek help, whether it be for a mental health crisis because obviously if they were a part of this or they had a family member that was injured or maybe they don't know where that family member is this is where they can come to get information now this crisis center was set up by the mayor of los angeles office uh, mayor karen bass helping out the mayor here of monterey park by establishing this uh, this center here, the Department of Mental Health on scene with uh, with their advocates and also um, with just people in the law enforcement community to help out. Uh, again, we've been seeing a lot of uh, food coming in as people from the community have been bringing them items. Uh, the Red Cross is also on scene to help with anything that might be needed by the victims. But again, anyone that uh, may have been involved in this mass shooting uh, who maybe has uh, a loved one that they cannot find or locate, maybe they're at a hospital, they might be one of the victims, uh, the deceased victims, they can come to this center and try to find some answers. Uh, this center will be here throughout the duration. Right now, the mayor of Los Angeles helping out the mayor of Monterey Park as they conduct this mass shooting investigation. They're trying to just gather um, as much of the witnesses or the family members or the victims that they can to try and see what they can do to help them out right now. Because you can imagine this is just a really heartbreaking event happening to this community here in Monterey Park. I'm going to throw it back to you guys in studio. Absolutely. Leticia Juarez, uh, we thank you for that update. We are now into our 1 p.m. hour here on Eyewitness News, both on air and online, streaming on our free ABC7 Los Angeles right, app. I'm joined now by Eyewitness News anchor Michelle Fisher uh, joining us here on the desk. Uh, you know, she was here last night when all of this was beginning to unfold. So much unclarity on what exactly was happening and now kind of a uh, full circle with uh, learning so much about the victims and now the apparent suspect in this white van. Uh, Michelle, just heartbreaking to see the impact, the broad impact of this event. Yes, uh, last night as all of this information was coming into us, um, something sometimes I don't know that everyone understands immediately, especially the viewers, they want answers and they're wondering, you know, how the process works in terms of getting information. Um, and we certainly shared all we could last night. But yeah, to your point, to see this all unfold today and all the new information we're learning and then to get that picture of a suspect, no name just yet, but um, and now for there to be a body discovered um, here in Torrance, it yeah is kind of come full circle, but still a lot of unanswered questions this afternoon about, you know, a motive and, and who this individual is, his relation to the victims, if any at all, um, if it is some type of hate crime or if it was targeted. So yeah, still a lot of unanswered questions um, that hopefully we get the answer to sometime soon, but certainly if the individual in this uh, white vehicle here is the person responsible, that at least allows people in this community to kind of 
be at ease and, and not have to worry about somebody still being out there with a weapon possibly who could, you know, shoot and kill other people. So absolutely. We spoke earlier with one of our law enforcement experts, Bruce Thomas, about the fact that more often than not, law enforcement does exactly what they did today. They find the suspect. They are very good at this, using all of their resources um, to gather the best information. Uh, once again, that image on the ground of what has been occurring there in Torrance this morning, a secondary location where the suspect has been located, a man inside of that vehicle, dead. Joining us live as well, Rob Hayes at Monterey Park City Hall, where that news conference wrapped up minutes ago. Rob. Yeah, you know, uh, so many questions still remain. That news conference wrapped up. The uh, sheriff uh, talked to us and they were talking about the possible suspect or person inside that van before uh, it was confirmed that someone was in that van. Uh, but we've seen that uh, we've seen that now that there was a body found inside that white van in Torrance. The big question is, is it our suspect? Is it the man that is uh, connected to the shooting here in Monterey Park? We just don't know. Investigators earlier at the news conference were talking about how they had a name associated with the person seen in those photos that they released. It was a, an older gentleman, an Asian man who was wearing the ski cap. Um, they have a name, but they aren't releasing it. They said that uh, they were afraid that it was going to impede their investigation and that their main priority was to get this man off the street. But again, we just watched everything unfold there in Torrance. Uh, is that the suspect? We don't know. The, the news conference ended before that went down, so now we're going to wait for the uh, latest update. Uh, we don't know when that will be, but, uh, you know, the, the last news conference was a couple hours before this one, so it might be a bit, or because there is a new development, maybe they'll all come back out and talk to us. But we will be here waiting to see what happens. Yeah, Rob, it's so true what you said, just to kind of pull back the curtain, you know, on, you know, falling, stopping short of the confirmation. Uh, you know, you have the vehicle that matches the description. You have a man who's, you know, dead in the driver's seat. You know, all of it checks off. But until law enforcement at the very top, the sheriff says this is our guy. We're good for now. No more threat. You almost just have to hold off still on the the we believe phrasing here because uh, it all pieces together. But until they say it. You know, we just, uh, you never know, um, it, it, along with the aspect yeah. of uh, was he working alone uh, in this crime? And, you know, speaking uh, to law enforcement, you know, he asked, he answered that question during the news conference about how much information they've been able to release. And, you know, they have updated us along the way. There's been little pieces of information that went out along the way. Um, so certainly a developing situation that uh, they are dealing with this morning. Uh, you may not have this information, but is there any indication that they're going to come back out and speak uh, at your location at Monterey Park City Hall? Uh, we haven't heard anything right now. The podium is empty, um, but they are all inside the uh, Monterey Park City Hall, um, huddled about, I ima imagine, discuss it, discussing the latest uh, developments and you know what they're going to say next. But uh, again, you know, there are, you were mentioning, there are so many dots in this case, and it's tempting to connect them all. We're going to wait for the officials to actually connect all those dots. Yeah, patience is the word that comes to mind. I know sometimes in these situations it can be difficult because yeah. we want answers um, as soon as possible. But patience and also trust that law enforcement is doing any and everything that they can to A, keep people safe and B, find the suspect, which it seems they possibly did, and C, just to uh, get those answers to us and get the accurate, correct information out to uh, news agencies and also we'll get that information to viewers. So patience and trust, which we're leaning into that right now. Okay, this is really interesting. Uh, Rob Hayes, thank you. Stand by uh, on the left side of your screen. More movement from the SWAT team members on the ground behind that Bearcat with the LA County Sheriff's Department, that armored vehicle, uh, a second white cargo van. Uh, earlier, we were told of one. There was one that, of course, we have been watching in which the uh, suspect was found deceased. You got to wonder, were there ever reports of two being involved? Um, certainly, they're not taking any chances here, and they are moving towards a second vehicle that I believe is just across the way from the parking lot of where the first white van was located. This is a new development. Guns drawn there from the backside of the Bearcat. Um, 
we're watching this with limited information, uh, simply kind of witnessing it, and a, a real concern of there potentially being a second suspect. Why would the van be in the same area? And why would it be uh, across the way? Right. We see kind of billowing there some um, flags that say sale. Um, so it makes me wonder, like, what, what is beyond this area? Mm -hmm. Is this an area where there maybe is a, a car lot or, or some type of... Um, but that vehicle, certainly with a dashboard there that seems to be a bit cluttered, seems like that belongs to someone. So, yeah, interesting that there's not one but two white vans that we know they were looking for initially. One person in the, the one white van that's off screen right now and then still waiting to see what's in the second vehicle here. But, yeah, guns drawn from the SWAT team as they cautiously approach this vehicle that is just abandoned seemingly in this parking lot across the way from the other vehicle. They're making their approach now. Yeah. They are moving in. This specific location is Lomita in Hawthorne. So it is a different intersection. These SWAT officers are moving in, appearing to go in from the rear. We are watching it here. Man, so incredibly tense. At a moment when you thought that their search was over, they move in, uh, move in again to another vehicle almost as though they have some type of a lock device to get that rear door open. This vehicle, unlike the other, does have rear windows. The other van was a, a closed back with no windows. This vehicle, this van appears to have windows there on the top side and uh, the SWAT beginning here to open that door. All right, they're taking a look inside. Former Los Angeles County Sheriff Jim McDonnell uh, still on the phone this morning. Wow, one development after another. Uh, what do you make of this secondary vehicle? The description is near identical. We had never heard that there was potentially a second white van that authorities were looking for. Um, offer, offer your reaction if you can. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a surprise. Uh... They uh, approach this one, uh, but while well, very carefully, uh, without um, the, the same level of standoff as they had initially on the approach to the other one. So sure. uh, it, lends, it leads me to believe that uh, they're running down uh, any possible leads or, or issues in the area that uh, are of concern. Uh, and, and as we talked about before, you know, you have one shot at a piece of evidence or potential evidence. And you want to be able to uh, investigate that while you have it there, because if somebody were to say after the fact that, hey, there was a similar van and it was parked right down the street. Did you see it? Did you investigate it? Uh, in this case, they can say, yeah, we became aware of it and uh, we did what we needed to do to either tie it to the case or, or find out that it wasn't connected at all and, and be able to move it, move forward. Yeah, incredible work. And thank you for walking us through uh, that potential approach on on what SWAT was uh, dealing with. Uh, of course, you know, some speculation, but it's it's fantastic insight. Uh, speaking to Air 7 HD, if it's possible to give us perspective of this location to where the other van is located as the camera pans up. OK, so it's it's a good distance away. OK, so this is more than just across the street. It's almost around the corner and uh, down the block, you know, and that 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 offers a good explanation for why they were telling people to clear the area earlier when we were uh, live with uh, Sophie Flay. Uh, she was told by uh, deputies in the area to move back, that they had to break down and move. And this maybe kind of speaks to that that broader crime scene, the perimeter uh, that is uh, in that uh, general area this morning uh, of Torrance. Again, in the South Bay, far from the distance of the original shooting, in uh, Monterey Park. Uh, former Los Angeles County Sheriff Jim McDonnell, we often talk about the duration of these investigations. Now with these two crime scenes, scene A in Monterey Park has got to go on for days, given the body count and the investigation right. underway. Something like this, the fact that we have a body in that one white van, that's going to play out for hours, if not into the night as well. Oh yeah, in all likelihood that'll that'll go on into the night uh, because the crime scene investigation, which is very thorough, will be done at the scene. Uh, the coroner will roll out, and the coroner will do their own separate and independent investigation at the scene, and then they re they remove the deceased and uh, take them to the coroner's office where uh, an autopsy will be scheduled and and then performed uh, in the next couple of days, and and then uh, you know. Can, 
contribute to the uh, to the investigation as to what happened and and to it, it's all like a piece of a puzzle and, and all these pieces uh, fit together, but you don't want to be missing any pieces, which is why they they find a van like this in the area and. We don't know if they had any additional information that it was there. It may have been spotted by one of the uh, units in the area and, and reported, uh, or it may be something that they had linked as part of the investigation uh, from somebody not at the scene and the vehicle was located. So uh, they they take whatever they can and, and run with it uh, while they have the opportunity to be able to do that. And then uh, ultimately in the in the days and weeks and months ahead, put together a comprehensive overview of what actually occurred last night and, and today. All right, former Los Angeles County Sheriff Jim McDonald on the phone uh, with us. Fantastic insight. This is Mark Cotarobles alongside Michelle Fisher here breaking into regular programming with uh, so many updates regarding this mass shooting that has occurred here at home. The fifth mass shooting here in the U.S. this year and the largest since last year in Uvalde, Texas. Ten victims killed, another ten wounded, uh, taken to multiple area hospitals, including County USC Medical Center. Uh, a lot of information that we are still waiting to learn and on standby potentially for another news conference uh, from Monterey City, Monterey Park City Hall, where our Rob Hayes has been located um, at that location. We've heard from Los Angeles County Sheriff Robert Luna, um, bringing us the very best information possible. And again, should this be the suspect they were looking for, we had an image, a man in a beanie, located at one of the uh, locations overnight, uh, but never had a name released. And you just hope that this is the guy, that there's not somebody else outstanding uh, that they're looking for. That would, of course, increase the concern. Everything's on the table at this point until they say, we have everyone we're looking for. There still is going to be that kind of remaining concern, I think, for the broader community. One of the things that Sheriff Luna said a bit earlier was they have been diligent to make sure any update that, that really needs to be out there, that they get it to uh, the viewers as soon as possible. So um, it's safe to assume, as you just mentioned, that we will get an update from them sometime, hopefully soon. I think the last update was about an hour, 15 minutes ago at this point, about an hour and a half ago. Um, but, you know, with the discovery of this deceased person inside of this white van in Torrance, um, that is certainly something that hopefully will be addressed soon in terms of who this individual possibly is and if it is the person that they're looking for who was in that photo with the beanie on. Obviously, we were not able to see inside of the, the vehicle to, to even get a, a look. I but. had a glance at the, at the gentleman who was in the passenger seat who was deceased. Um, obviously, it was, a, it was a brief glance. I, I can tell you he did not appear to be wearing a beanie. That may right. have come off in the, the hours after the shooting, but he was uh, slumped over in the driver's seat. We had been overhead of the vehicle for multiple hours, two to three hours, and never had necessarily a good shot to indicate that he was sitting there, uh, presumably the whole time. Our coverage continues right now with Eyewitness News reporter Josh Haskell in Monterey Park at the shooting scene. He's been there since early this morning. And Josh, uh, something that really sticks with me is uh, the community response. People who live and work in this community, a hardworking community, including, you know, the local bakers that you spoke to, heartbroken about what has occurred. Well, a lot of focus of this investigation the last few hours has been in Torrance, but let's not forget the whole investigation centered here in Monterey Park. And we're going to show you a little bit about what that looks like in a minute. But I just want to show you uh, how things have changed here uh, throughout the day. We now uh, the crowds have come and gone. A lot of uh, community members, different people that we're planning on experiencing and attending and celebrating in the Lunar New Year uh, event that was uh, scheduled to take place and takes place every year here in downtown Monterey Park. Uh, and as we pan back, I want to uh, go in on that that green awning uh, because behind that shop is where the dance studio is located uh, and we know that uh, since um, late last night investigators have been centered on going in and out of that dance studio uh, and of course the scene outside of it and as we pan a little bit more to the left we can show you where uh, the command post has been set up uh, and we have seen investigators uh, all day going back and forth through that alley the entrance to the dance studio again is behind the building that is located on Garvey we are at Garvey and Garfield where we'll, we have been all morning uh, and as we 
pan around the other way because I think it's easier for you to see. Mark, we've been talking about the community response, and as I mentioned, you know, people had heard about the shooting. They didn't know necessarily that the festival had been canceled. So we have encountered lots of people. Um, maybe hard for us to pan around, but we'll go a little bit. You can see that is where the festival was set to take place. A pretty sad sight as the tents are now being completely taken down. All the vendors spent the morning clearing out. They told me they were really looking forward to this day. This is an event that they don't uh, just come to because they have a cultural connection to it, um, but it's a lucrative uh, event for them and they rely on it each year um, to sell their merchandise. And that's just not something that was able to happen today because of this mass shooting. You're getting a live look right now on Garvey, which is in downtown Monterey Park. And uh, so we do have people that are that live in this area. We also have people that were planning on attending the festival. And we also have people that uh, are trying to find out more information about their family members. That's been one of the saddest parts about this is that uh, I know that you had uh, Leticia Juarez on earlier and she's at the Family uh, Information Center. And we've had some people that have come here first, I've seen numerous family members crying, visibly upset, and then they moved to that other locations. So many people live in and around this area. Uh, this was a very pop. This is a very popular dance club. Um, and from our interviews earlier, you heard uh, that people were invited to events here. It was a pillar of the community. Uh, so many people are familiar with the dance studio or the different businesses around here. So they are just absolutely shocked that not only do they not get to celebrate the Lunar New Year the way that they had hoped, the way that they had planned, the way that they have in the past, they now are mourning some of their friends, some of their family members. Uh, as the investigation continues into how this happened, why this happened, uh, and, and that is the latest here from Monterey Park, I'll send it back to you. All right, Josh, thank you so much. So many people in the community um, coming to that area where they had hoped today would be a celebratory experience to celebrate the Lunar New Year, but instead just a much different reality for people there in Monterey Park, instead dealing with this mass shooting that claimed the lives of 10, five women, five men, and then there are many other people that are still injured and in the hospital as well. So just a heartbreaking situation there. Um, I believe we do still have Leticia Juarez, who's also in Monterey Park. Um, I actually stand corrected. We, do, we don't have her, but right now we are taking a live look back at Torrance, um, where we know there was also an active scene there. You see in the frame there a white van um, that was the attention of SWAT activity just about 30 or so minutes ago. Um, a deceased individual was found in that vehicle, still not clear if that was uh, the suspect that police were looking for who they released an image of about an hour or so ago. We are expecting and hopeful that uh, pretty soon at some point we will have another update from law enforcement. We want to make sure we're getting correct and accurate information out there, but um, certainly something was found in that vehicle. And as uh, former LA County Sheriff Jim McDonald explained, um, the coroner, coroner will now have to come in take a look at that um, individual's body to really determine what happened there, the manner of death, and um, ultimately, you know, how and, and when, why that person died and if there was any connection to this mass shooting. Absolutely. Uh, you are watching live coverage here on ABC7, both on air and streaming online in our free ABC7 Los Angeles app. We're going to be wrapping up our coverage here uh, within about a minute or so. Closing statements here from former Los Angeles County Sheriff uh, Jim McDonald. Let's say we have about 30 seconds or so. Um, your closing thoughts on everything we've witnessed over the past 12 hours. You know, I think as residents of, uh, of L.A. County and of Southern California, we have a lot to be thankful for and proud of for the, uh, the way that this was conducted. The fact that uh, you had such a, a horrific incident, a uh, tremendous amount of resources were dedicated immediately and, and then throughout the, the duration. And now the investigation will be thorough and ongoing. It's just the collaboration among all of the entities that come together. And not to forget the, the victim side and the families and all of the things that are being done to try and comfort those uh, that have had a loss or that have uh, had somebody seriously injured. Uh, that'll go on for, for a long time to come. So uh, I think when you look at uh, something horrific happening, we're trying to be able to do the best we can. Uh, we have a lot to be proud of. 
Absolutely. Former Los Angeles County Sheriff Jim McDonald now with USC. We appreciate your insight over the past several hours, along with all of those who have joined us, our reporters on the ground and our law enforcement expert Bruce Thomas, providing that critical insight and information about this deadly mass shooting in the city of Monterey Park. It will be under investigation for days to come. Our coverage continuing throughout the day on air ABC7.com. We will be back this afternoon on air for Eyewitness News at 4. At four. Okay, if you are streaming with us, our coverage now does continue. I was unclear if we would be continuing to stream online, and we are. Uh, this is an image on the ground from Torrance, the aftermath of a SWAT operation from this deadly mass shooting. Uh, there were multiple scenes playing out, one in the San Gabriel Valley, uh, actually two in the San Gabriel Valley overnight, and this third location uh, in Torrance. Mark Cotarobulus alongside Michelle Fisher on the news desk, uh, giving you the very latest on this developing situation. The image on the left of your screen is the white van that was the center of so much attention for a few hours in this parking lot, the corner of Sepulveda and Hawthorne in the city of Torrance. Oh, now gathering evidence where a male suspect has been located deceased on the driver's side of that vehicle. Uh, for some time, we had two Bearcats pinning in this vehicle. It's unclear if there was any type of pursuit, what led officers to this location, but in the hours leading up to uh, this specific uh, ordeal, we were told that a white van, a white cargo van, was the suspect vehicle, and this is where they found it, uh, certainly piecing together all aspects of this investigation this morning. Yeah, that was one of the first pieces of information that came in, I believe, was about that van, which does allow people in the community to then call police, um, and not only that, but then police to be on the lookout for that vehicle as well. Um, and as you mentioned, it was located with a deceased individual inside, still unclear if that is the suspect who was responsible for this mass shooting, but those questions will be answered at some point. Things that we have not reported on because they have not been released is the suspect's name. Law enforcement said they had it. They were not releasing it. They also uh, did tell us, however, that this was not an assault rifle for what it's worth that was used in the shooting. Uh, there was a weapon that was recovered by patrons at the second location last night in the city of Alhambra, a situation where this suspect allegedly walked into another dance hall facility and he was overcome by patrons who were able to disarm him. So at least one weapon in the custody of law enforcement. We've been told by LA County Sheriff Jim McDonald that that weapon was not an assault rifle. We have now one suspect deceased in the city of Torrance, 10 dead in Monterey Park. So clearly a lot to gather, a lot to go through in the hours and days ahead. We are going to step aside here with our streaming coverage uh, here on the news desk. Our images will stay live as we continue covering this online, abc7.com. We thank you for being with us. Stay safe.